gets he gets tough real then quick. I had to cheat all right I'm out of here bye boat enjoy your fancy water feast all right brutal barracuda man you're a ape card what's going on brutal you're a you're a man that's been cranking out the content like a like a freaking machine my brother you you fade away then you bam you appear it just and you're just going crazy I love it it looks good hi pipe how are you guys doing Hasifa what's up dude we got a good I like we got some good stuff to yeah like a ninja like a like a content ninja I love it I love it Everyone's content on the Amigos is better than mine. <laughs> I, I'm just literally here basking in your glorious glow. Oh man, the Piecade. It's funny, I just put out the uh, Atomic Pie last night for some more testing because I plan on doing some uh, capturing off of it. Hey Paul, what's a good word, sir? The boat is uh, having a little bathroom siesta he'll be here well i guess well when you say it like that it sounds kind of creepy not that i mentioned it but uh hey uh uh tomorrow night uh taze valley classic computer club we're going we're going again uh, i think we're going to have some uh i think we're going to have some amiga 1000 tomorrow night we're going to have some atari um and i think some coco so we're getting it all in tomorrow I'm going to test my Amiga 1000 keyboard on Boat's Amiga 1000, I, and I brought him some kickstart discs over, and I'm hoping that one of these will fire that sucker up. It'll be awesome. Because once I've determined that my keyboard is working, I'm going to go into mine, because both our keyboards are filthy. Uh, so we're going to do some work on those. It should be fun, though. It's cold here, by the way. It's cold and wet out there today. Oh yeah, with the uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We it's funny how we both ended up getting one thousands within the same couple months. I mean, th those are not they're not coming up out of the woodwork here in the states. <laughs> it's quite amazing. I'm glad to see Bode excited about having an actual Amiga. That makes me happy. What's up, six double M? What's a good word? I'm going to get Boat. Boat's going to be a tried and true Amiga hardware owner for the first time. And uh, I hope he really gets into the actual hardware. You know, and then once we get the 1000s fully operational, we can start dabbling into the realm of wacky add ons. You know, the, uh, what is it, the A520 or whatever, the, the Amiga 5000, Amiga 500 add-on that you can actually mount from the side of the 1000. I'm sorely tempted to get me one of those. Oh, he, Paul, he does like the Amiga, but he, Boat is one of these guys. He's a, he's very, uh, you've heard people say they're polarizing topics. Boat is a, a walking, talking polarization of, of things. He either loves something or he absolutely disdains it. He's a, he's a very he's he's there is no middle ground is there boat you you either love something or despise it there's very little in between I wouldn't say oh that. yeah when it comes to Amiga that's you're you're an extremist nah, well, maybe so. we're just talking about how nice it is that you're finally on the trolley with getting yourself some Amiga hardware in the yeah. house well when it rains it pours because Jason just sent the uh, 600 he just put it in the post oh sweet yeah man and that's a pal one too yeah yeah, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be looking. I'm telling you, we need to get all these Amigas together. Remember my idea? I you poo-pooed it last idea. time. Well, it's because it would be an insane amount of work for the smallest amount of payoff imaginable. Oh, though, there's payoff. What's there's payoff. <laughs> the payoff is you got a big stack of plastic? No. The payoff is how many people, how many videos have you watched that were not at a con that assembled the Amiga hardware that we've got sitting around? Very, none. What do we have? We've got a 1,200. Uh-huh. We've got two 1,000s. That in itself is, is, Oh, unbelievable! We got two 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 thousands. We got a six hundred. We've got a we've got two five hundreds. We've got the twelve hundred, and we've got the CD thirty two. That is a lot of Amigas. That's right, and I've got a a six hundred motherboard as well that we got sent from that fellow. I believe he was out in Phoenix or uh, Arizona or uh, somewhere. Oh, 
You picked a Thompson up, dude. Oh, man. That's awesome. I forgot my papers. Are you kidding, Hasifa? I, actually, it's funny. I, I had a 4000 I wish I'd never sold that stuff, boat. Retrospect. Well, yeah, because you could sell it now and retire. Well, we did. We did pretty good on it. Yeah, we don't have. We don't have any of the big box amigas. That's that's how you got all your money for your pinball machines. You know, it's it's funny though to think about this boat. How often in this in this country have you come across a big box amiga? I mean, that's something I've never even seen for sale okay. locally. How often have you been? I mean, sure. I mean. Yeah, well, the 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 score that you just got was a one in a million thing with the Commodore hard drive and all that stuff. Oh, so I got news about that. Oh, do tell. The Germans are in the country. Really? Yeah, and they're gonna. I'm hoping you can come over. I think they're gonna pick that. They're gonna come over to the house to pick it up either Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Uh, and well, so, Tuesday is my band concert. But well, if it's I'm Monday, hoping let maybe me Monday evening. Yeah, I'm gonna, but, yeah, uh, yeah. And I and the and the fellow has agreed. He well, he was he was skittish a bit because he his English he's not says is not great. But he's agreed to do a little Listen, interview. Listen, man, I I know a couple German people, and anytime they say that, their English is better than ours. Well, he he writes English better than me. Yeah, you've seen me. Yeah, uh, and and since I'm speaking, whoa, Macintosh librarian, what's yeah. a good word? Hey, hey. I believe that's Kate Fox. I think it's rerun. And that'd be hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's the third hey. I forgot. Well, it's been a while. I never liked that show, to be honest with you. That was several decades before I was born. Do you remember what the name of that show was? Uh, good Times? No, it's What's Happening. Wasn't no, it's it? the same show. No, it's Good Times. It's totally different. Good song. Can you sing, sing some of the Good Times? Good thing? Times. Anytime. Monetary layoff. Good Times. <laughs> that's it. Cheesy tax collectors. <laughs> that's it. That is a very... I can't believe you know that so I well. Do, I do. Keeping your head <laughs> above water. I had an ex-girlfriend that really liked Good Times. That's a great song. That was when I was living in D.C. She lived yep. in Georgetown. He knew it was you, Kate. I knew it was you, Kate. She's the Mac. She's Miss Mac. I brought some things. Oh, yeah? Think about that, huh? What do we got here, Boat? It's a, uh, it's a vinyl sticker. The Ooh. Amigos vinyl sticker. Yeah, right stick there, that right on the forehead. We could each put one up there. I like how soft it is. No, it is that <laughs> something creeping me out, boat. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get a bunch of vinyl stickers at? Uh, the internet. Man, they sell things there now. Oh man, you can get anything on these. I know. I thought they were real cheap, flimsy coasters. No, no, they're they're they're, <laughs> they're real the cheap, flimsy stickers. Um, I also got some of these, and by some I mean a butt ton. <laughs> Eloquently put, boat. <laughs> Check I thought that out. was like a bank statement. Oh, I did have my insurance bill lay on top. How of fancy! Me. Yeah, little doodads for your. What's up to Dunk? Bark. Return labels for the what magnets. Up, bark. The magnets are coming in soon. Man. So our good pal out in, in Hawaii. Is our Hawaii, Hawaii. Yeah. Good Jonas, pal out in Hawaii. Jonas. That's when Amigo Studios turns into Grand Central Station. Some stamping thing. Is, the, is it almost time? So I better get my sign and wrist ready. Oh that, yeah. yeah. Get your sign and wrist ready. I'm ready. I, I, you know, you ever see those people that can do sign two things at once? I think it was like was it Teddy Roosevelt that could do that or somebody. I never heard that. One of the presidents TR. could do the the double. Mm. What do you think Teddy Bridgewater can do? Man, not much. <laughs> not not too much, man. I yeah, uh, I'm excited about these series of shows today. I uh, yeah, I got to spend a lot of time. The amount of I'm particularly anxious for well, I, I anxious for all three with the Donkey Kong one. I took eight. I, I played a ton of Donkey Kong. I was telling, uh, I was telling, uh, uh, gosh, who was I talked to last night? I was talking to somebody last night about this on the Discord about. Oh, it was Curtis. I played a ton of Donkey Kong. So I, I, it's funny. You made the right choice because you didn't play Donkey King. No, I put no, in, including Donkey King. Mm -hmm. So I played. Let's now get this because I'm working on something. Yeah. Right? I've played Donkey. I, in fact, I'm going to tell you my conclusion right Thanks, now. Thanks, Kate. I'm Gamble gonna, train represent. I'm gonna Even give, though it's not ironed. I'm going to give this away. You're, I'm going to give it away right now. I'm just give gonna, it away, uh, man. Give it away. Give I played it away I now. played. I played Atari 2600, Intellivision, uh, ColecoVision, Atari 7800, uh, of course, the Donkey King and the Coco, the 8-bit Donkey Kong. I played all those Donkey Kongs and the Spectrum Donkey Kong, okay? Now, all of them had their various merits and flaws, but I've determined which of the Donkey Kong, I think, melds everything together in the best playing package. Okay. Okay, do you want to take a guess? I'm going to guess Donkey King. No. Good. No. 
I was just getting it out of the way because I was going to destroy you. No, if you, you know what it thing. is? It is. I'm going to say it. Okay, wait a minute. Wait okay. a minute. So you the the best total package yes, Donkey Kong. I'm talking, and this is for eight bit and below, right? That's right. Yeah, okay, that's right. So no no getting into actually I played level. Amiga Donkey Kong too. Okay, which I think was ported from the C64. So you included that in there. Yeah, I want to say the ColecoVision. Incorrect. The correct answer, and you're gonna it's gonna blow your mind. You ready? I'm ready. Atari 7800. Okay. Why you're asking yourself? Does it have all the stages? It has all the stages. Okay. Number one. Number two. It's got the right colors. It's got the, and it plays pretty close mm -hmm. to the RK now. It it does have, have the best sound, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the one that doesn't play too fast or too slow, mm -hmm. and you don't spend too long on the ladders. The barrels don't go crazy. Right. It's uh, it's it's not the best at everything, but it's the best at most things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm giving that one the double thumbs okay, up. Okay, yeah. I would not have guessed that. Yeah, and I'm completely unbiased because you know me, I love Donkey Kong in all of its form. Well, you know, Atari did put, uh, you know, more effort than anything else into their arcade ports for the launch of the 7800. They, they, they really wanted to make sure that those looked good uh, to the detriment of almost everything else. Let's, let's face facts here. The 7800 was released, and they had to make those arcade ports as great as possible. Why? Because they were porting stuff that was had been out for t for seven years right. or more. Right. Oh, yeah. And that and they knew it's like, listen, this is all we've got. Mm -hmm. We've got to crank this up to eleven. Yeah. And let's face facts, uh, some of the ports aren't that good. No. No. And Dig Dug in particular is not great on the 7800. No, Rampage, which no. I, I looked Rampage at. Rampage is also not great. I looked over all the Rampages. Oh yeah. We'll talk What's about up, that. Okay. Yeah. Show, yeah. We'll, I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you play any of them? Oh yeah! Oh, me too. I had a great time playing Rampage. <laughs> I played it on all kinds of all kinds of. You know, it's a, it's a perennial favorite of my of the boy. Thank you, Duncan. You know? We look forward to it. Uh, we we Eric. are expecting a couple show packages that we will open on our Christmas show, which is going to be on December twentieth. So mark your calendars now. I'll mark mine. Yeah, I know I did. Much like the insert this too. Just I just that showed up in my in my podcast. I was like, what the heck's this? When did I do this? And there it was. There it was. I only vaguely recall that conversation. Yeah. Well, it was late at night. I was in good form. Yeah. For someone full of crap. As soon as I heard you start talking about boxing, I hit record. Oh That's usually God. what I do. That's there are a couple sort of keywords that I pick up on. What if I'd said something like controversial in the mix, right? That you didn't see it coming. Been a controversial episode. No. <laughs> There's a couple things. Whenever you start talking about boxing, yeah. whenever I hear you start talking about the female doctor, and whenever I hear you start talking about Zeus. That's when I hit record. Speaking right of away. Zeus, what do you think about that? I know. It you had the chance that you will shake hands with Zeus. Yeah, the Z-Man. God of... That's what they know. call him. Can you imagine that? Yeah. He's the god of he's the coming, slow movement. You know, he's been in a lot of big movies. Really? What he, else no was Holds Barred. Well, yes, of course. He was in Fridays. Was you he seen in that? Fridays? Yeah, of course. I've seen Fridays. He was in Batman, the one with the Joker. He was one of the convicts on that one of the boats that was going to oh, get blown the up. the new Batman. Yeah, t t Tiny Lister is his name. Huh. He's a real legitimate actor. He's been in like tons is of movies. Is he a, re a real legitimate fighter? No. I don't <laughs> think he ever fought anybody. You guys have heard of Tiny Lister, right? He sounds like a boxer. He's a big Tiny He's Lister. a moose, the man with yeah. the big poot. Yep. That's how you know he's, he's a legit. And you got the poot. Yeah. Or, you oh, know. Thanks. Uh, I can turn myself up a little bit here. Oh, actually, no. I want to say that this main mix has got something to do with it. I, I don't know. I don't know how to operate this board. You dumb. Thanks, uh, six. <laughs> oh no, yeah, Picard, he should be. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm fixing it. I'm working. That's it, dude. Terra K's in it. That's a correct amundo. Okay. How is it? Oh, that's too much. If you look up Tiny Lister on like Wikipedia or something, look at his various credentials. This is the man that may be coming to Madison, West Virginia, and I fully believe this was uh, uh, some kind of edict sent down from the gods to mm. get you to meet him. I want you and him to have a mega power style handshake. Yeah, if there was uh, if there was ever a wrestler that I would like to meet, I think it would be Zeus. I mean, even he's, over Abdullah. Yeah, because Ab Abdullah, Zeus, I'm, I'm afraid I'd contract some. Sort I was going to say Zeus won't Abdulla. give you hepatitis yeah. instantly mm -hmm. yeah. or try to cut you. Right. I, right. I was listening to an interview with a guy, and he he was an interviewer. And he said, he, no, he was interviewed with an interviewer. He's a wrestling guy. He's okay. a wrestling journalist. And Thanks, guys. He, he said that uh, uh, he one of the things they did, they, they, it was the Observer website, and they were, they were doing a series of interviews you could pay to hear. And one of the ones he was doing, he was paying Abdullah to do an interview. And he said the whole time he was afraid Abdullah was going to 
Yeah, fork him. Yeah, because Abdullah had him. actually done that to people <laughs> during interviews. So he was scared to death that Abdullah was going to fork him. You know, Abdullah has got a very strange body shape. He's got flabbiness. It's like a couple sort of bodies of, yeah, like, strapped together. Yeah, yeah, He's been around forever. He well, was, yeah. He was one of the proteges of the original Sheik in Detroit in like the late 50s. I'm not lying about that. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you think he ever had hair? He never, not when I saw him. And he was always a huge fat guy, too. Mm-hmm. He's one of those people that just started out big. Kind of like um, the guy from Back to the Future. What's his name? Christopher Lloyd. He started out old. Like, you never see young Christopher Lloyd anywhere. There's a bunch of those guys, yeah, that just they always look like they were old. And they're still mm-hmm. around. Like, Steve Buscemi? This guy? Where's yeah. young Steve Buscemi Steve at? Steve Buscemi, he didn't look old. He's just weird looking. Sort yeah. of partially melted. Yeah. Kind of like know? the Coco 2 keyboard. That's right. <laughs> melted face. <laughs> <laughs> they call it the Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready to kick this thing off? <sighs> What, what do we, yeah, let me get my appropriate gimmick here. Okay, I have not done <gasps> any preparation. Let me turn off my, oh, the, yeah, we gotta get the, uh, Edvin's in the man cave, we can start the show now. Hey, Jackie, welcome. Edvin, glad you're out there. That's where I like to believe that you are most of the time. Whenever I'm having a hard day, I just think about you kicking back in the man cave. If Edvin's like better. me, you've got the man cave, it's out there, but getting into that sucker is nigh impossible. Like it just the opportunity never never you just arrives. Just gotta tear yourself away from hour twelve of City of Heroes leveling. You know I haven't played that then, for like a month. Yeah, I know, I know. Mike was talking about shutting the server down. What? Yeah, because nobody's playing it anymore. Me Even and, Dale. You know why? <clears throat> stupid, no, because of stupid reasons. Because uh, they they change the log on stuff, and they and they never bothered to change their version of it. So they they just don't know how to get back on. Mm. I had to help them. Uh, hey, listen, it, it, I, I hope he doesn't do that because I, I love that game. But it, it, time is time, you know. It's tough to play anything like that. Plus, I've really been doing a lot more show stuff than I was yeah. doing before that, too. Yeah. Oh, man, this looks awesome. I'm just looking to see what Dreamcatcher had cooking. I haven't seen these. So he's got two articles this week. Oh, man. Did you see this Nosferatu game? Yeah, man. Is that on the spec? No, it can't be. It looks too good for Dude, the Spectrum. Well, uh, now, listen to you. You're going to get us in trouble because of your stupidity. Don't pick on people. Also, the Spectrum's awesome. Did you see that demo that came out today in the freaking Discord with that Drift game? Yeah, that looks great. Good God. I can't believe that Now you're going to badmouth the Spectrum? No, Did I was not badmouthing it. Hit, and it had everything. It yeah, it's a 128K. Have, it didn't have music that you would expect on the Spectrum. No, no. Well, there's a ton of... The thing is, since we mostly play 48K games, there's a lot of great 128 AY is what they call it in the industry. By the industry, I mean the business. Yeah. See, I, I'm not. I don't have my, uh, you know, my finger on the pulse of. I'm on. I'm on Spectrum Net every day. Are you really? No, that's oh. a made up website. I was. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, this was on. This did the triple Spectrum Amstrad and the C64. That's yeah. right, brutal. You need to get multiple TVs with multiple streaming devices so you can play Amigos on every single one of them. It would be fantastic. I don't know. What do, you, what do you mean? Oh, you're not talking about Amigos. You're talking about the morning show, aren't you, Brutal? My bad. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, man. There's another dud. You know, I've been, I don't know if you ever watched Dreamcast, or Dreamcast, Dreamcatch's videos. He, he gets on these tears of a certain film and just, he makes the craziest little videos. I mean, he, just, he, he is a true artiste. Like, he, is. he has the mind he of an artiste. I'll, hey, I'll, Jason. Uh, Jason Warren. What's going on, dude? We were just talking about you. The impending uh, dissension. Boat was bad mouthing you, but I, I said you were cool. I was not bad mouthing you. <laughs> I defended you. No. I, wouldn't, I don't, don't bad mouth. Stop calling him a hoser. I don't bad mouth people, and I don't bad mouth games. What do you mean? You bad. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're a gimmick. You're welcome, dude. Someone's got to look out for you. I'm all out of fancy water. We haven't even started yet. Thank God. That fancy water, it's no good. He looks like one of the three stooges. That's there. Max Shrek. I, I can, I'm going to go into this. Okay. Get ready. All right. This is my jam. Hmm. To coin a phrase. Yeah. I'm stealing it from you and Brent. Okay. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Nope. You didn't put the intro in. I didn't put the intro in. Don't we forget the voicemail. You told me to remind you of that. That's on the Coco Show. I'm just telling you now. That's like three I'm, hours from now. Listen, I'm just telling you now. Okay. Because I can't remember that far. The voicemail. Remind him, everybody. Okay. So we got to have five seconds of silence, and then 
the uh, the intro will start. So here we go. The Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about P.P. Hammer. Yeah. Now, I, yeah. I know we're, we're getting ready to hear your thoughts on P.P. Hammer. I want to know where you stand on the other hammer, M.C. Hammer. Hey, man, I'm down with M.C. Hammer. Tell me about the first time you listened to M.C. Hammer. Well, it would have been one of his uh, early offerings in the uh, baloney rap industry at the time. <laughs> Which I believe is when he ripped off Super Freak was the first time I actually. I, listen, MC Hammer was around before he did uh, that song. Can't uh, touch this. I that's believe. right. Yeah. He was around. I'm sure I heard his name. Like it wasn't my bag, but I heard that song and I was like, I liked Super Freak, Rick James, mm-hmm. and so I heard doom doom doom. I was like, oh yeah, and then I was like, what the what what. But then when he came in, ma, 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 you know it's getting real when he repeats the first word like five or six hundred times. Well, here's the thing about MC Hammer for me, because a lot of people were down on him for that disgrace. But it is a catchy tune. All right, Rick James will throw it down. Mm-hmm. And then MC Hammer's rap's pretty good. And MC Hammer was a, a, a tremendous dancer. Big A's fan, by mm-hmm. the way, if you remember that. Love and that, a, uh, Oakland, Oakland Athletics? Yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. And a uh, big baseball guy. But his, he had the big pants. Mm-hmm. The parachute pants. He did the bit where he would grab his waist and could, like, go across the stage mm-hmm. and twinkle it's, toe it's around. Sort, it's sort of like a like a horizontal moonwalk. I can do that bit mm. the full, with the pants. Were you wearing a coat at the time? Mm-hmm. No, I can do it now. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about the back in the day. The problem is the big, huge pants that he wore, they fit me perfect. That's a bad thing because mm. he was way for thin. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I like the MC Hammer. Uh, for what he was. And then he had another song where he ripped off. What was the other thing he ripped off? Like When Doves Cry or something? He did a couple of well, these Well, I don't know songs. if you know much about rap music. Right. But they do this thing called sampling. Well, listen. There's sampling and then there's horking. That was a... When you take a big chunk of the song... It was it was 10 seconds of Super Freak. Listen, it was... Dun, 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 that's, that's the that's song. It. Well, I can't, bl- I, can't, I can't fight that Super listen, Freak's a lame listen, song. Listen, you... It's a, Oh, now don't be going down there. Don't. Rick James, Rick totally James overrated. might come to the house. You know that. Oh, if he does, I'm going to die. He's a killer. Don't you say cocaine is a powerful <laughs> drug? He said. But here's the thing, MC Hammer like was one of the big guys that started that crap that, of like really rapping over a pop. No, song. no, no. He, he was no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Have you ever heard rapper's delight before? I, yes, I have. Okay. So that was like 10 years before no, 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 MC you, Hammer, and it also rep, ripped off a pop song. You, not this completely. What yes, I, what, it did. This was the era of taking like most of a song. Like, for example, let's uh, let's let's talk about Vanilla Ice. Okay. Remember his big song where he yeah. really take a big chunk of Under Pressure? Mm-hmm. At least MC Hammer had to come and courtesy to say, yeah, Rick James. Whereas... Vanilla Ice would be like, I didn't rip off Bowie and Queen. It was a, theirs goes dum 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 right. da dum dum. Right. You know, the same, the famous yes. bit, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't like when they take a, the big chunk of the song, or like the whole chorus, and then just like rap over it. Okay. I can tell that we're probably not going to start a rap podcast anytime soon because you'd, you'd be in the reward of hurt. Oh, what are you going to You going to school me on rap? Well, you if you say, me? I don't like when they take stuff from other songs Rapper's and they delight. rap on was top a of it. complete, total ripping off the whole chorus of a song. Yes, it was. What song did they rip off? Chic. It wasn't a total chorus rip off. It was the entire chorus they rap over. Nah, nah. I'm not, I don't feel the same way about that as I do the MC Hammer stuff. Okay. And, and, there are, and we can agree on this. There are much more, in fact, recent, there are much more... Tr- uh, uh, Bigger offenders than even than even this was. Uh, I would hear like what was the song I just heard a couple years ago? I couldn't believe it. It was just it took the whole song and just wrapped over little parts of it. I I can't remember. Oh, well, there's like cashmere. 
uh, would come with me, the Puff Daddy thing. Yeah, you remember well, that? yes, yes. From Puff, the Godzilla soundtrack. Puff Daddy is a uh, is a is a violator, you know <laughs> that. But overall, MC Hammer was sort of like uh, a wacky fun. Listen, I loved MC yeah. Hammer, so you won't get any. You won't get. Are any. you kidding me? I'm not surprised. I right? love. Okay, you got to remember, I was about ten or eleven years old when MC Hammer came out. Yeah, I was scared of most hip hop. Okay, it, it frightened me. Whenever uh, I believe you. Yeah, whenever Yo MTV raps would come on. First of all, I didn't watch much MTV because the whole network scared me. But I would, I was extra scared of like big guys yelling at me on the TV. And so, I. Uh, I'm gonna remember that for later. <laughs> so, um, but when MC Hammer came out, he was like, "This is a cool dude." You know, he was on Arsenio and he was dancing. I loved Arsenio too. And uh, oh, Arsenio Hall, Ohio University alumnus, me and oh, him yeah. colleagues. Oh, yeah. Me, him, and Richard Dean Anderson. That's the tower of power right there. Wow. Superman. Yeah. So anyway, um, I remember being in fifth grade and just everybody was doing that the running man. And it was just it was just the whole gym, just all the time. The song would go off, he would still be doing it. It's you know? funny it's funny how dance has changed because I, when MC Hammer came and also Paula Abdul was another mm-hmm. one. Right? Well she was I think she was a dancer she for was, MC Hammer. Chore, she was a choreographer, yeah. And, but No, she danced with probably somebody bigger but, than Michael Jackson but before she got famous. She, I thought when, when MC Hammer came out, I thought, man, this is the peak of human dance. Mm-hmm. This is the best. He yeah. was the best. And now if you watch his stuff, you're like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little hokey. It's a little dopier now. Yeah. And, and Paula Abdul's dancing is straight up nothing if yeah. you watch her stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, 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 at the time, it was, I mean, I remember the first time I saw Michael Jackson moonwalk. We were, I, my jaw hit the floor. Oh, yeah. it was on that MT, yeah. when I was on that. It was uh, the Motown 25th that's anniversary. Right. I, I was mm-hmm. watching that live. I was just mm-hmm. like, oh. So it shows you how uh, much that stuff's evolved. You watch dance, and now it's unfreaking believable what they did. Now, right? I'll tell you, my, my greatest MC Hammer cl- uh, connection was I wanted to, you know, I heard the Adams Groove, MC Hammer's Adams Family song. Okay. Oh, it, it, it can't be as bad as the other guy's Adams, oh. Family's Adams Family Value song. I, there was an Adams Family remember, Value remember, song. No, it, remember. Uh, I think you're thinking of the song that I'm talking about. They do what they wanted. No, this, that's MC Hammer. No, no, not that one. The one I'm thinking of. Uh, was uh, uh, who, who were the guys that did a whoop? There it is. Oh, that's the uh, the Baja Men. That they, they did that they did a song for Adam's family, and it was whoop the Adam's family. There it is. I never forget that. I was like, <laughs> okay. this is horrible. That is lame. You've heard that, that is one. lame. Yeah, yeah. That's and it's not the worst, the, ba- the Baja Men is who let the dogs. That's out. That's one of the worst video. rap songs of all time. <laughs> okay, is that Adam's family? You're right. Family that song. is that is horrible. But anyway, I bought the soundtrack for the Adams Family, thinking that Adams Groove would be on there. Yeah, you would think that. And so I I put it in the tape player, and I, it was nothing but just classical music. It was nothing but the and I was never so so disappointed. But later on, I grew to love classical music because of the Adams Family soundtrack. So it all came back around, and MC Man. Hammer is inadvertently responsible for where I am today. I hope you're, none of your students are watching this because did, you're documenting your your own idiocy. They, I'm sure they love MC Hammer. It's hard to believe that the, your love for the Adams Family rap <laughs> is the reason that you're a band director. I know every word. Maybe it'll be the Patreon song. Oh day. God, man, <laughs> horrible. All right, Aaron, I want to give you a quick Amiga Ireland update. Okay. Okay. I'm still going to Amiga. Ireland. I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, got a donation from the one and only Chris Foles. I've heard of him. Who wrote in, beer, Amiga, whiskey, kebab, repeat. Mm. That's all you need to know. That's all. That's like you you, you dream right there. Yeah. Right there it is. Yeah. Uh, and so there is still time, folks. Uh, if you want to sponsor uh, wall-to-wall live-streamed coverage of Amiga Ireland 2020 over in Athlone, Ireland, uh, you can head on over to ireland.amigospodcast.com. Ooh, and, uh, you URL. Can, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and, of course, that is uh, that pays for me to go over there, obviously. But also, uh, you get something in return. You get all the talks are going to be recorded and live streamed. There's going to be interviews on the floor with all of the big guys. And Knowledge Bomb, I'm dropping it right now. Yours truly is going to be hosting the main panel on Saturday in Amiga Ireland this, this year. My suggestion is don't use the phrase knowledge bomb while you're up there. I want to get up there and I'm going to say Pleasance. I'm going to drop a knowledge bomb on you. Listen. And then I'll <laughs> just, him, I'll just tell him how, him how the, it was. Ask him where the CD32s were in that <laughs> warehouse and see what he says. <laughs> oh. So I, I'm already coming up with a list of, uh, of questions to ask these guys. I, I think that uh, Dave Haney is going to be there, David Pleasance. 
maybe RJ Michael is going to be there. I don't know. These are not 100% confirmed yet, but if you have any ideas for uh, questions that you'd like to hear on the panel, you can send me a message at john at amigospodcast.com and uh, I'll add them to the queue. So you're telling me that you're going to be emceeing and questioning the luminaries, the most important people in the history of, of Commodore and the Amiga. That's you, right. Bo, John, Boat of Cards. That's right. As a, as a bona fide Amiga expert. As a, as a now finally a certified hardware owner. That's right. You now have the ability to ask these questions without looking like a chump. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, uh, But anyway, that'll all be streamed. Uh, plus, we're going to get my, my big thing this year is I'm going to get groups of uh, people together from different countries and I'm going to get just together have a fight. And <laughs> it's going to be just like that, be that show that, you le- that, that we watched that one night the, the MMA group battles that's it <laughs> this will be the less skilled version but I'm going to get like I'm going to get all the Greek guys together and we're going to talk about what it was like you know growing up in Greece with the Amiga all the Swedish guys and it's going to be cool it's going to be and, and of course I'll release those those episodes out as it's on a podcast bonus episodes and stuff I love so. that that's going to be awesome it'll be cool to hear uh, different uh, perspectives that you yeah. know Usually here, and absolutely hear, you know, Greek or Polish. It'll be, mm-hmm. it'll be awesome. Yeah. Good idea, boat. Yeah. So anyway, Ireland dot amigos podcast dot com. You're not just going to be liquored up in a pool of your own vomit. You're actually going to be doing some work over there. That's right. I'm in be, your a pool of your own vomit. Yeah. It'll be. It'll, I, can, I can multitask. Mm. Aaron, let's talk about this week's everything amiga dot com site updates. Oh, beauty! Now, the DK he's been up the he's been up to his usual shtick here. If I may say now, uh, the first thing he I want to talk about is his "Everyone Loves Lucy" article. Now he doesn't mean Lucille Ball, of course. Uh, he's talking about the classic silent film Nosferatu. Mm-hmm. Now you ever you ever seen this film, but with Max Schreck in it as I, the Nosferatu? I have seen it, and I was surprised at its length. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's not a full length motion picture. No, but I mean, when I think about silent films, I think they should max out at about fifteen minutes. Because I mean, what are we doing here? Listen, this is a classic, and the image of uh, Max in his Nosferatu getup coming up uh, uh, is haunting. It and is, and you see it everywhere. It's been used many times. The shadow lurching across yeah. the uh, hallway there, and uh, it, it it is a creepy little film, mm-hmm. and the makeup of that's astounding. Mm-hmm. It really is. Uh, and have you ever seen The Shadow of the Vampire? I have. And it's a tremendous film. I, you know, I'm not a big scary movie guy, but I really like that who movie. Was the, who was it that played... Uh, uh, who was the famous actor that played Max? It was... Uh, Bob Denver. N- no. What? Bob Denver Gilligan from Gilligan's Island? Mm, not no. Maybe not. It was uh, the same guy that was in the uh, Spider-Man movies as the Green Goblin. I'm trying to think of his name. He's super famous. Nevertheless, it's a great film. And if you haven't seen it, the premise of it is... Uh, when they go to film Nosferatu, Max Shrek is actually a vampire. Right, it's great. And so as he goes to the movie, he keeps <laughs> k- k- eating all the cast members, all the crew. Yeah. William Defoe, <laughs> thank you, Terry K. William Defoe, and it's it's a tremendous movie. I really loved it. So yeah, but I mean, this is good too. And uh, 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 DK goes into the Nosferatu game that was released on the uh, Spectrum, in the Amstrad, and the C64, which I've not played. Uh, it looks like one of the iso- those isometric mm-hmm. dealios mm-hmm. boats. Maybe we'll come around to it. It's funny. I try I, now that we were doing the uh, the ZX Spectrum show. I don't. I try not when I see these games. I try not to play them because I'm afraid they're going to come up. I don't. I want to kind of be fresh for yeah, them, and so I, I don't play a lot of them. So, uh, but uh, uh, this looks interesting. Like I said, I, I was a big fan of the. I, me and Teresa watch Nostra Project every year or two. We will sit and watch it. And it is a creepy. If you haven't seen it, it's uh, it's a uh, unsettling almost the uh, way it's shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. I like it. the way that he sort of rises up out of the coffin. Oh, that's another yeah, one of those that's classic. So cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were doing it right even back then. It's it's quite amazing. So yeah, that, I give that the high sign on that. Now his other uh, article is on Batman Returns. Now, do you remember? I'm trying to think when Batman Returns came out, both the movie. I want to say 1991 on were this you, one. How old were you? Is this I one of those 10. things you could go see? No, gosh, no. I did didn't see it until many years later. Did you see the rental. original Batman? Uh, not until many years later as a rental. Yeah. Um, I have played this. I'm trying to think where I played it, uh, this particular game. And I didn't like it. In fact, I don't like most of the Batman film, uh, mo- or, uh, games. Even some of the ones on the animated series aren't very good. Mm. You know the uh, N64 Superman game that everybody hates? Mm-hmm. Like, that was based on the animated series, and it is a travesty. It's the same guys that do the Batman. It's a travesty that that got uh, 
you know, jobbed out like that. Yeah, it really line. wasn't until the Arkham games, you know, Arkham Asylum and stuff, that there were there was a really good Batman. Well, the game. Super Nintendo animated series games are okay. We some of those are pretty good. And I know that the the Spectrum isometric Batman game is well regarded, but it it could be anything. It's not. I mean, it's just Batman tooling around a universe. Yeah, but I mean, it's, I thought I, that's pretty good. This wasn't that good. Now, did, did you say you have seen this one? Uh, I've seen the movie, and I think that I rented Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo, and I was disappointed. I mean, it's it's your standard beat em up sort of yeah. deal. Yeah. I uh, uh I didn't like this film all that much. I didn't think the first one was all that great. I didn't get through to the be second completely one. Honest with you. The second one was uh, it's funny cuz these games the Batman franchise uh, films started Midland to okay, and mm. then steadily went downhill. Yeah, and they never like the first one was better than the second. The second one was better than the third one. Mm -hmm. The third one was better than the fourth. I mean, they were all garbage. Right, and they went. I mean, right in the sewer. Mm. So Michael Keaton really was the best Batman, and he was just in two what I would call Midland. I thought the first one was okay, mostly because of Jack's performance as a Joker. But and the second one was. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer in a nice outfit was okay, but I mean, otherwise, has she done anything else other than Batman? Oh yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. she was in the uh, she was in the movie where she was a teacher at the inner city school. Oh, she put the chair backwards and she was the in marine. Fact, uh, that's I'm, the the Coolio song. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, 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 Gangster's Paradise. Yeah. Is, is from that film, uh, and she's done, done a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, my buddy, my buddy said he was hitchhiking. I think it was in North Carolina, and he swears to me that she picked him up and drove him to town. Unlikely. He said, and he loved her too, so there yeah, you go. But anyway, yeah. Danny DeVito was uh, the penguin in this, which I, it's funny when you're a comic book fan. It's funny, uh, even as the uh, uh, a lot of people don't realize that the animated series takes a lot of its inspiration from the early films, and uh, especially they, the aesthetic, the Art Deco. That's right. Yeah. But they didn't take everything. Thankfully, they didn't take the fact that Penguin looks so freakish. I mean, he's just sort of a he looks more like a, a guy in the, in the animated show. Mm -hmm. And, and Catwoman looks better. too. They all look pretty much better. But I don't still. like watching people eat raw fish, and Penguin does that in this movie. Didn't That's you, when I turned it off. Didn't we see that at the at the at the restaurant a couple weeks ago? Isn't that what sushi is effectively? I don't like watching anybody eat raw fish. Well, I go. stand by that. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. But anyway, if you're into the uh, Batman or Nosferatu, check out DK's articles. He goes in super in depth, screenshot comparisons, the whole nine yards with his own. Inimitable style. Absolutely, we love we love the dream catch up. Let's talk about the gamble train, Aaron. Oh, yeah. The gamble train's running a, a short schedule this Sh week. Show, show them the shirt. Pull it down. Mm, there it is. It's hard to see over my gut. But I the, gamble the gamble train, train was oh, coming over a hill. Yeah, that's exactly. It's coming, coming like over it's the horizon. <laughs> but the gamble train, it's 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 got just a couple cars this week, as it were. I guess I want to see what you got on here because I've even got some stuff that you may not have picked. Well, up. maybe so because I only have a, a couple news. These stories. better be the best news stories ever. Let's see them. They ran across the radar this week. Um, as I switch over to the gamble train, there we go. Um, first up. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, but it has not it had not been translated yet. Issue number 14 of Commodore and Amiga Plus has been translated. This is a magazine that I believe originates from Poland. I had the good fortune to talk to the editor-in-chief over at Amiga Ireland last year. His name is Tomas. And uh, he has uh, put this thing out and the team here in the States has translated it. This thing is one of the top-notch publications in the Amiga world. The layout is excellent. <laughs> Um, it's super fancy. Yeah, yeah. You can order. Uh, you can order a print copy. You can order a digital copy. Uh, it's over at ka-plus.pl, and you can uh, find the the English edition there. So uh, check that out if you are so inclined. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff there. And uh, the only other story I've got this week, Aaron. Oh man, I've got it. I've got more. Is uh, Amiga Ireland has a new podcast out. This is uh, it's called The Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, and uh, Are they, they covering Nightbreed. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> um, but anyway, he's uh, they, they. This is uh, the guys over there. They uh, they round up the latest stories 
all from an Irish perspective. I see. And so uh, make sure you check that out over at AmigaUsers.ie. Well, now, Aaron, you want to talk about those wireless gimmicks? I am. That's okay. what I'm, look, I'm trying to get everybody a name to go along with this. Yeah. So I will say... I had a hard time finding a real site for that. You posted a YouTube video and that was it. That's right. Well, uh, b uh, this is one of those crazy things that uh, is being taken through uh, Facebook right now, pre-orders. Oh. Uh, there's the, there's the fellow, I'm not going to give his last name, his name's Carlos. If you go to the Amiga Facebook section, uh, there you'll find that uh, there's a fellow that is that is taking pre-orders for a uh, USB uh, to Amiga joystick adapter that will allow you to hook up modern uh, USB style game pads uh, with the Amiga. Okay. And it shows okay. him using uh, Xbox One and PlayStation controllers with it, and even the uh, eight bit do wireless um, get like a Super Nintendo pad. Hmm. Now uh, these are in pre order. But it doesn't seem like it's going to be too long before these ship. Kind of like the Spectrum Plus, just right around the <laughs> corner. You mean the uh, next? The next. Um, what was the Plus? There was a Plus too, wasn't there? You're thinking like the Vega, the, the Plus. Vega. I don't know. No, the, the Guile. Only, I don't know, but the the Guile. Yeah. And then the, the M Bison. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are, I believe. Let me double check here. I think the ones I bought were. 20 big euros. I don't, uh, that's not, that's, I think they're 15 euros and then plus shipping. Mm. Okay. What's the euro exchange right now? Both. It's about a buck 13. Buck. So that's, hey, that's a heck of a bargain. So I picked me a couple of these bad boys or ordered a couple of them up. And so if you are, uh, if you're looking to uh, get some action, and listen, I, wireless, there's a goal I've always had get wireless controllers for the Amiga. Now, I, here's what I'd like to have, and maybe somebody in, uh, can line me one up, right? Here's what I want, right? So I've got the wireless receiver. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. What I'd like to have is like a, I, I can go with a game pad. I'm okay with a, the Super Nintendo or whatever, but it would be cool to have like a wireless, like, Wicko. You, you want the Ergo. That's what that would be. Mm -hmm. That would be the, the bomb mm -hmm. dot com if I get that. So if anybody knows of a wireless. Uh, uh, actual joystick, a USB one. I'd be down with the clown to check that out too. But I've never, I don't think I've ever seen one that was like a, a proper joystick. Right. You know what I mean? So that'd right. be that'd be kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, the long and short of it, boat. Okay. Okay. Well, I do have one more bit of news. All right. It is time, everybody, to vote for the Amigos Listeners Choice Awards 2019. At the end of every year, Aaron and I uh, gather together for a roundup of the, the our our favorite games and your favorite games uh, that we've covered this year. You can go to vote.amigospodcast.com and fill out the survey. Fancy. Um, you can choose uh, the best shooter, the best sports game, and it's all the games that we've covered this year. So, um, you know, we want to get a lot of responses. We've already got over 25 or 30 responses so far. So I, I saw that on Twitter when you announced this that my uh, my uh, uh, mentor, Shane R. Monroe, yes. looked at the choices and said, God, God, so many things have been left out. And you had to school them that these are just what we reviewed in the last year. Right. So yeah, that's why Super Frog and Stare of the Beast aren't involved. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put those on any. I looked over these but... lists. I'd say of all the years we've done this show, this has got to be the wackiest <laughs> list. Of we stuff. played a lot of There's weird some stuff weird this year. Stuff yeah. this year, and I was. It's funny. I filled out my whole list, and in my I lost internet service. So I got to redo it. Mm. But I really struggled, and I think, I think it's my hard choices. I think my game of the year. May surprise people. Hmm. Let's go with that. Okay. Three Stooges. <laughs> it's back. It's back. I'm pulling it 2015 back. 2015's Game of the Year 2019. That's right. Three Stooges, man. Yeah. So anyway, one more time. That is vote.amigospodcast.com. That'll be awesome. Yeah. That'll be awesome. And when is that show going to drop? That's going to be, we're going to record that live on uh, December 27th. December 27th. Yeah. Saying, I'll be off that week, too. That whole week. We'll also off. have our predictions for the new year. With, complete with dumb hat. Yep. There's going to be, there's actually a section in the survey where you can write your own predictions as well as your favorite Amigos moment from 2019. Mm, I know mine. All right. The you second can tell the song's me. over. That's my favorite moment every week. Yeah, so you can just bask in the afterglow. Oh, I, I bask. understand, man. I understand. All right, Aaron. Let's talk about this week's game. PP Hammer. This unfortunately named title. PP Hammer. But again, I always like to ask, did you heard of this one? 
Never in a million years have I heard, heard of a game before. called P.P. Hammer and his pneumatic weapon. There are two things wrong with the name of this game right away. Okay. All right, let's go into it. All right, straight away. Okay. Number one. I would say the first one is a synonym for urination, but, I mean, Nintendo got away with that and they did okay. What What, what was theirs? We. Oh. That's what they call it over in England. I get you. Well, that's what we call it that too. No, we don't. You know, you've never said in your life, "Go have a wee." Yes, I have. Only when you're trying to be cute. I'm always cute, right? Coat. Anyways, so number one, PP Hammer is a dumb name. Yes. Okay, so that's the first atrocity. Mm-hmm. The second atrocity is this is called PP Hammer and his pneumatic weapon. And as far as I know, as far as I got in the game, you can never hurt anyone with your pneumatic weapon. Correct. So therefore, it's not a weapon. It's just him with a pneumatic tool. It might be the worst name game ever. So what were they thinking on this one, Boat? This name sucks. Yep. All right, so uh, PP Hammer, I gotta keep calling it that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Released in 91, Boat, on uh, a disc. Now, developed this. This was developed by a German outfit. I looked. I tried to find some out, some, some news. Get the scoop on these guys. I didn't find Jack Squat. Traveling Bits as the developer of this. Mm. Now, I looked to see if they'd done anything, and they had. They'd done two other Amiga games. One of them's a German game called, uh, and someone can maybe translate this for me. It was Einmal Kanzier Sein. All right, see that. I, can you pronounce that German? Yeah, so that's more the, German-like. I think you did a great job, actually. Really? Yeah. Hey, that's how I do it. The other one, uh, and this one has a much catchier title: Brain Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, man? I'm going over to the gym. What are you going to do over there? Brain, Brain, Brain Ball. Ball. Listen, wear a helmet, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, this is a. Uh, uh, I'm trying to explain. By the way, the guys that worked this only worked on a couple games. And all of them worked on Brain Ball. Of course, who wouldn't? <laughs> Another game, cunningly titled Gun Shoot. <laughs> Which I enjoy. <laughs> Gun Shoot. Um, the, uh, this is ECS, OCS, you know, the usual stuff. And this was actually, uh, this also appeared on the C64. Okay, Which I, I can looked, see it. I looked at that version, too, and I'll comment on that in a little while. And a note on uh, Hall of Light mentioned that this, uh, as a budget re-release, was published on the a spiel disc number seven. So if you're German and you know what that is, there you go. So what is this game, Boat? Uh, it looks like a platformer. Mm-hmm. And to a certain degree it is. But it's also very puzzly, mm-hmm. isn't it, Boat? I believe they call it a puzzle platformer. Now, you play as the uh, f- aforementioned PP Hammer. Mm-hmm. Do we know what the PP stands for? I looked at the back of the box try to get some knowledge and it really didn't have much to say about this game it's a shame that in the docs they didn't you know give us his full name yeah i was kind of wondering what the p and why not go things like peter paul mm-hmm. go with that pp you know don't go with anything else so uh this game i guess if you picture a combination of any platform on the amiga that had a kid with Load Runner, mm-hmm. and then you've got PP Hammer. Yeah, I think that's it's fair. an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting combination. So, you are a little geek in a with in, with glasses in a construction hat, who and, and who also has a pneumatic drill mm-hmm. or or a, a jackhammer, whichever one you want to go with. And he runs around and tries to collect all the treasures. And when he gets all the treasures, he can leave the levels. That's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> There are, according to the box, there are sixty. There are more than sixty levels. There are, and they are made up of twenty five hundred screens and seventy caverns. That's a lot. Wow. Yeah, uh, you've got uh, a lot of the usual suspects here in terms of level design. You've got your ancient Egypt, ancient Rome. You've got ice. You've got castles. There are bonus levels where you look like you're like in like a Lego zone. Mm-hmm. So you've got you know nothing too crazy so the the bulk of this game is made of pp hammer running around in these levels uh, and going up and down ladders and jumping and trying to catch all and trying to get all these uh bits of treasure along the way he'll find destructible areas <clears throat> that he can use with his jackhammer and drill down now the gim- and he once he drills down they eventually go away after after a couple seconds of drilling the gimmick on this game is and this is what makes it load runnery is that after a spell, the 
items, the dirt or whatever he dug out of ice, it comes back in the exact place. Now, when you say at. after a spell, you mean after a short time, not after he'd cast the spell. After, right? Yeah, I okay. guess I West Virginia up yeah. there, didn't I? After a short time, the, the block or ice, whatever he drilled off, will reappear. And if P.P. Hammer is there, then he's in deep trouble. He gets he is. killed. It's game over, man. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> P.P. is a, actually an amusing little guy. Uh, as far as mascots go, he's not bad, is he, Bo? No. He, well, uh, he wears a hat when he he he, can, he looks a lot cooler in the game than he does on the cover art and the stage, like the get the get ready. The screen. cover art and the get ready screen, they suck. Yeah, they don't even look like him, no. do they? No, he looks like the biggest doofus in the world. Yeah, he looks in this um, game. He looks like if like, it's like they said, listen, go find us a geek, mm-hmm. you know, and then. Put, give him a hammer and a hard hat, and he and the geek doesn't know he's a geek. That's what makes him cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's. I think a, a big thing that helps in the game is that he's wearing sunglasses. It sort of gives him a cool guy air. Right. Not to mention the greatest idol animation of all time. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring as, that up. As PP Hammer appears to be about seven years old, <laughs> um, in, in both the box art and the get ready screen, he he lights up a cigarette when you when you don't do anything. In my mind, I don't picture him as a kid. He reminds me, it's like a, a Woody Allen. Type guy. Sure, I can see like that. Like a little geek mm-hmm. who's, but he's, you know, Woody Allen used to get all his crazy adventures. He was sort of brave and sort of tough, but not really. That's what PP Hammer is. I think that that's great. This should have been a Woody Allen time. Ah, oh, man. That would have worked back then before they, it, we, yeah. his reputation went to the sewer. Uh, so anyway, PP Hammer runs around. Now, these, these levels are often not straightforward. To get to a lot of areas, you'll have to drill down and, uh, uh, You'll have to drill out. This was actually pretty tough. You'll have to drill out like a section of the floor, mm-hmm. then go down and drill another smaller section, and then maybe even another smaller you section. You kind of got to stair step it a little right. bit. Right. And if you and it's real easy to screw this up, and that can be quite frustrating. Yeah. And it is possible for you to actually get trapped, and you won't die. You either have to wait for time to run out or just press the escape key. Yeah. And now, just right out of the gate, what was your what were your initial thoughts on this when you booted it up? Especially given the name. When, um, you, when you heard the name, you saw it boot. What'd you think it was going to be? I thought it was a joke. I thought <laughs> it, I, I, I thought PP Hammer was a like a recently released game, and somebody was having a larf. Yeah. Um, however, this was a legitimately released title. That, yeah. I mean, it was completely earnest. Well, I don't know how earnest it was, but um, I was pleasantly surprised with this one. Um, you know, it seems like we've we've played quite a few games over the past few weeks that I just haven't been able to get into. And this was the first game in a while that I was like, man, I'm really having a good time playing this. Um, I think that PP as a character is fine. I love his little butt wiggle he does when you complete a stage. He's, of course, he sort of sashays yeah, the door. Yeah, I sort of do that move when I leave for work every day. Yeah, I yeah. believe you. Um, so uh, I like that. I, I like, I thought that the hammer... Although it cannot be used for a weapon, which is ludicrous, uh, I it, it behaved predictably. Uh, when you're drilling down, the drilling is not instantaneous. And part of the skill of the game is to drill in such a way that you can set the timing correctly so you can make progress. Yeah. Um, probably my favorite thing about the game is actually the HUD. Um, for you know the first time in forever, I can understand what's going on in the inventory. Like, yes. here's things yes. that you have. Here's the keys that you here's use the, to activate them. Keys, and yeah. they're labeled on screen. Here's a bar with your energy. Yes. It, you can tell it's the energy bar. Here's, here's and then on the right here. side, here's a little hint. It, it gives you it gives you the name of where you are, and then it throws up hints, and the yes. hints are useful. Yes, I, I'm not gonna lie, you you nailed it right there. Good For once, you got something right. The head, the HUD, you know, we. I go back to that Dreamcatcher article where they'll eat up part of the screen. This isn't that. This is a useful HUD that they've put in a very cunning way. Right. At and the it, top, at the top, you've got the time. Mm-hmm. You've got the treasures you got left. You got that, and you've got how many men you've got in the score at the bottom. You've Everything got your, has a purpose. You've got your inventory. You've got your uh, the amount of time uh, health you've got. The amount of time your special item is on. You know, is there, and in the little message. I like the little message. Mm-hmm. I love the little hints. Mm-hmm. It also will tell you, okay, you're running out of time. You know, are it's you, fantastic. Yeah, it's great. It's like having a little buddy with that, you. It is. It, you know, I, I know you say that mockingly. No, I don't. True. It, I don't say it at all. I, I love think it's that. great. I think that it, it would. I mean, it's almost the same as if you've got a little droid with you and he's he's giving you useful information. I, you know, it's uh, that was great. Now let's talk about the game itself. I have to admit that I had heard of the name of this game and noted how dumb it was. But overall, I didn't never play it. That's right. That was good wording. I didn't never play it, but 
Like I'm West Virginia to the gills tonight. <laughs> so uh, I was I was pretty pleasantly surprised by this. It's now it, it's not without its flaws, but it's a it's a pretty clever game. The digging element is fun. You know, I was never the biggest Load Runner fan, mm-hmm. and this it, I guess I compared it to Load Runner in terms of the way the hammer works, but it's the Load Runner was really difficult. Yeah, and, it's and, difficult and, and, and unforgiving, and very. It doesn't have much personality. Yeah, this game, you don't really have to be in a. Right, you don't have to be in a hurry except for the timer and the fact that you don't want to get caught with those blocks. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not like a mantic game. You know, when you play it, uh, the backgrounds and stuff are pretty good. I, I I had to cheat to get through some of the later levels, a lot of levels actually, because I thought uh, uh, I wanted to see as much of the game as I could. And then I watched the play through the usual stuff. But I got to level like eventually after uh, playing for a while, I could get to level five or six mm-hmm. without too much difficulty. Uh, it, the, the backgrounds do change. You do get ice levels. You do get oh, and we should mention this game has background music. Um, it's not great, but it does have some. It's, it's not great, but it's not awful. And um, it sure does beat just here in the cavernous sound of your footsteps, God style. Well, you're right. But, uh, but it, to me, uh, the background music was sort of, I mean, no offense to the musician, but it, I, it was no great shape. It was, it was, it was yeah, it was I, sort of standard fare. It was, it was. I, I didn't do, it didn't do much for me. Uh, we, we should mention that the game has collectibles. Uh, and in the form of like basically bottles or potions, uh, there's a red bottle, uh, and it, this gives you energy. It's basically like a health bottle. A blue bottle gives you like jumping ability. Mm-hmm. A yellow bottle gives you invisibility. And if you get the oil barrel, which you occasionally see, you probably I just don't even know what that does. The it oil makes, barrel, yeah, it makes it you drill faster. Makes you, that's correct. What are you talking it, about? Yeah, you get that on like the first okay, level. I, just, I listen. I had it for most of the t- forever before I knew what it did. Mm. I never. The thing tells you in the corner. Well, I never used it though. Until I, didn't, I was like, oh I'm going to save this. I didn't know what it was for <laughs> until I didn't realize it was something was going to come up again and again. Uh, you can also you can find hearts that give you an extra life. Uh, there are scrolls, and the scrolls give you tips. Did you did you find any of those? No, I did. No. Uh, there's, and then you'll find the blue crystals, and they teleport you to a bonus level. Now, let's talk about the bonus level. Bo. Tell them about the bonus level. The bonus level, you have a set amount of time to dig through a Lego-like universe uh, to uncover some fruits. You have to get all the way. And if you get all the way to the end, it says, like, superb. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, PP sort of hangs his head in shade, yeah. and he cusses, I believe, and, you know, the usual. Qbert style. That's mm-hmm. that's here for known as that. Yeah, right. Um there are also some critters, and or occasionally a persons or people that will come at you. Uh, usually, it's like I saw snakes mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. There's bats. Uh, yeah, there's snakes. The, the usual crap. And, and the thing is, you can't hammer them. It's yeah. not hammer time in this game. No, uh, it's get hammer. And there's no way to actually destroy the enemies in this game. You can stop them from reaching you if they are ground based enemies. But then they, but uh, but there's no way to actually kill anything. Yeah. Which is a real shame because there sure are a lot of ways for you to be killed. Right. And now, yeah, let's go over some of these. So you've got, you'll, you'll, there are several different types of traps in this. <clears throat> you've got mud. Now, mud just sort of is hard to get through. Mm-hmm. But you go, and which the first, when I first saw mud, I was afraid to touch it, but you can touch it. Then you've got uh, like slippery stones. You've got trap doors. Uh, you've got, I didn't see some of this stuff, spitting heads. Those are like basically engraved in the wall and they shoot. Like projectiles at you. Uh, again, you can't do nothing about them. Then, of course, there's big pits of uh, fire. There's pits of water. Water, well, water and fire pretty much have the same reaction. Like you, you start to take damage on your, uh, and if you don't get out of there, your health bar runs down mm-hmm. and you're gone. Of course, you got to have spikes. You know, you got to have those. Uh, there are sometimes areas where the roof will fall in on you, and you can get smushed. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cheapness in this game. There's not, a lot of there's a lot of things. It kind of reminds me. Somebody in the chat mentioned this. It's it's sort of got a Rick, a Rick Dangerous vibe to it. It's one of those games where you're not gonna, if you're, especially on the later levels, you're probably not just gonna run through it in the first time out. Mm-hmm. Now I will say they do ramp up the difficulty, but I will say that the difficulty ramp between the third and fourth level. It, it's a little much. And the real problem I had on the like the fourth and fifth levels was. Just trying to figure out which way to go. Yeah, and like the, it's you the go, same oh, old I, story. Where you'll you'll find keys that open up these trap doors mm-hmm. that you need to go in, uh, and, and also at the very beginning, I didn't know what the key. I couldn't figure out what the heck the key holes were. I thought that was a little odd too. The game does tell you yeah. the hint box does say you need to put it in the keyhole, but I wish they would have made the keyhole look like a keyhole. Yeah, but I will say once you know what they are, 
it's no problem. Right. And with the HUD, with the function keys, it works out great. Now, did you have any issue with the fact that this game forced you to use the keyboard? I used the controller. No, I mean for that function key stuff. Oh no, because this isn't exactly a hot and heavy action title. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Um, so I would rather have that than some hackneyed like spin the joystick around 360 degrees deal. Well, I mean, th there's no way they could have done given you this amount of inventory with no, that. You'd have. No. I mean, I think this is a perfectly fine way to go. For yeah. And I will say, in a game like this, using keyboard controls actually works okay because. Uh, Newsflash, it's not a super quick game, at least on the levels I saw. Now, I went through and checked out some of the other levels, and it, it does get a little more manic, but it's still not that bad. Mm -hmm. The timer is, at least the levels I thought were was pretty generous. Yeah. Uh, and you, your health bar, I thought, was fairly generous as well. I agree. I uh, agree. And, so, and, and the fact that when you got Well, it's funny because the health bar is, I guess this is one of my <clears throat> little niggles about the game, is that yeah. the health bar is such that you can take like thousands of normal hits from like your garden variety enemy, but it doesn't matter because all it takes is one like block to appear over you or get hit yeah, by one major enemy and you're dead. The blocks, if they appear on you, instantly die. Yeah, yeah. Um, we mentioned that when he gets down and crawls, he looks like a little turtle uh, with his hard hat. Um, I would accidentally crawl when I was going to use the drill a lot. I don't know if it was just me. Did it happen to you? Yeah, because whenever you're pressing down, then you're going to start and crawling. So and so that's one of those situations where, boy, I was aching for another button. You know, like hey, there, I mean, what can you, you do? You don't have to tell me, man. Um, I looked at this on the C64. It's eerily similar, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you. Well, this there's is not, not as much color yeah. detail on PP Hammer. Right, but this isn't a game that needs a whole lot of detail, so yeah. I can see why. But, I mean, it, the detail. It, this isn't going to win like any beauty contest, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's fine. It looks, it looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, where do you put this in your pantheon of? I don't know what where which pantheon we put this. Let's say, uh, like your your uh, act. What you call action puzzle or platform puzzle? Sort of like your Lost Vikings and that sort of thing. I, I like this more than Lost Vikings. I I was lost from the get go in Lost Vikings because you're balancing so many different guys and the stages are so massive. Yeah. Um, this was a little bit more approachable for me. Um, I like the playful nature of it. Um, I liked the, all the anal, idle animations. I thought the music was okay. Uh, this is pretty near the top. I don't know that I've played any puzzle platformers on the Amiga that I enjoyed <clears throat> more than this. I, uh, I, I I liked it okay. I mean, I, you know, my guide is how would this fare on another system? And this one, I think I could see this one. I would change the name. Yeah, there's no doubt. And but I could see this. This is one game where, like, if this was a Genesis game or something, I could I would have no problem Absolutely. believing that this could because. This is a game that you could uh, could you know understand that that builder. Now here's a little interesting little tidbit I dug up, but when I was doing some research on this, um, so get this, um, and you may have heard this. I, I seem like I'd heard this, but I didn't know for sure. So in 1993, uh, an outfit called Kimco released a game in, in in their series of games of the called Crazy Castle. You ever heard the Crazy Castle series? No. I so, think Kimco is a strategy publisher for for Nintendo. So they released this on the Game Boy, and they released their the in America they called this the real Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. okay. And in the in in uh, in Europe it was called Garfield's Labyrinth, like Garfield the Cat. <laughs> you can just stick anything in there, and but it will get work. this: this is the crazy part. The game is a direct lift of PP Hammer and his pneumatic weapon, and they basically did sprite swaps. And I watched some of Ghostbusters. And it absolutely is PP Hammer. There, I, looking now, like a Ghostbusters. you know, we can sit here and talk about how PP Hammer is a good game in its own right. But if I buy a Ghostbusters game and it has this style of gameplay, I am ticked off. Yeah. Well, get this. According to the developer of PP Hammer, in which we mentioned, the developer uh, was um, uh, Traveling Bits, uh, and this is I got this from the uh, I don't know if it's from the wiki or where I got it, but according to the developer, the port is entirely unauthorized. Hmm. So someone just basically ripped off PP Hammer, did a uh, pallet swap and a sprite swap, stuck it on a Game Boy cartridge, and sold it. These are for the original Game Boy. Uh, but like I said, real Ghostbusters, uh, uh, they just, I mean, they did some other stuff to spruce it up. But I'll watch, and sure enough, it's its just like this. That's the exact same gameplay and everything. So That's awful. I thought that was kind of I feel wacky. bad for the traveling bit boys, or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it kind of kind of wacky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I looked at some reviews on this uh, on this bad boy uh, boaster. Um, our our good friends at Lemon gave this a seven point eight six. 
it's funny, for once, the lemon scores are actually a little lower than the magazine scores. That doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. Amiga Action uh, reviewed this in 91, gave it an 88. Uh, and uh, Amiga Format, or excuse me, 91. If they reviewed an 81, that'd be quite a, <laughs> quite a trick. Uh, in uh, Amiga Format 91, gave it an 80. Amiga Power, I didn't like it as much. I only gave it a 70. Uh, CU Amiga gave it an 85. And the one gave it an 87. So you're talking basically a firmly a B title right there, which I think, yeah, that's a pretty much exactly where I think I would put it, right in that uh, B range. Mm -hmm. You know, did we get any uh, listener uh, reviews on this well, one? We did. We got some reviews here on the Discord channel. As always, if you are a Patreon supporter of the show, you can uh, go on our Discord uh, channel and uh, post a review. So Pixels of Dawn says, a solid little puzzle plat, excuse me, solid little puzzle platformer. It's not going to win any rewards for looks. It reminds me of early DOS VGA titles, and the controls could do with a bit of tightening up, but the gameplay is solid and it is generous with lives and time, at least in the early levels. Definitely a game I will come back to, 8 out of 10. Brutal Barracuda says, A fun little puzzle platformer with nice graphics and good controls. The levels are nicely designed and varied. My biggest issue was the fact that his pneumatic weapon is not a weapon at all, yeah, there it and is. it's only used for drilling. Yep. The game certainly ups the difficulty as you progress and becomes increasingly frustrating when you start having to run from enemies that follow you around the level with no way to kill them. Yes. Overall, though, I would recommend Bark Bit says a smoking, butt shaking, power tool wielding treasure hunter of a handyman. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like me. That's a. It's clearly Bark Bit should have been charged the name. Yeah. Throw the guy in a puzzle platformer, and what you get is a mixed bag. The graphics are nice, using your pneumatic drill is fun, and the difficulty level is just about right. The music is of very quality, some of the levels are way too long, and the jumping mechanics aren't quite spot on. However, the satisfaction of completing a level after numerous deaths trumps the minor gripes I have with this game. 7 out of 10. Mm. Chris Fold says, A fun puzzle platformer with a cheeky wiggly bum. The graphics and sound are very PD. And the difficulty yes. level does ramp up quite fast, but it plays well, and deaths never feel cheap. The most interesting part is how it was unofficially cloned and turned into real Ghostbusters and Garfield's Labyrinth. There it is. 7.5 out of 10. And finally, Graham W. Vebke says, While I am PP, pleased as punch, <laughs> we got a chance to play this game oh. as I actually enjoy this, and I originally played the C64 version. The art and music here suits the theme of this game and is an important is an improvement on the C64 version. In my opinion, the game borrows puzzle platform elements from Load Runner, such as the digging, but with a jackhammer, and falling with no damage, which is great. Yeah. I also see some influence from Panama Joe, introducing key and hourglass items. Not familiar with I haven't Panama played that Joe, one either. Yeah. I know Panama Jack. Yeah. Inspiration for the captain. And there are other items to, to find, too, like various colored bottles, blue gems, hearts, scrolls, and oil barrels. The controls are a little loose, but I can forgive that due to the fun gameplay which keeps you coming back. It's sometimes frustrating, but never cheap when you fail, and overall is a game worthy of your time. Looks like the listeners had about the same opinion. Uh, since Graham gave it an 8 out of 10, you got a 7.5, a 7.8, and an eight, so right in that... Yeah. Right around the 8. Pretty area, good. Seven and a half Pretty to good. Eight. Yeah, I agree. Um, I did look this up on the eBay Boatster. Mm -hmm. There's some... There, there were no cheap ones up there. Uh, if you are particularly uh, in a hurry to get rid of your wad and you live in Germany, there's two fellas there that have a hope and a dream. They're selling this box for $330 and $942. Oh dollars, or best offer. Uh, so if you're in Germany, get your checkbook. And if you're in the UK, uh, this guy's a little more down to earth. He's only asking 131 bucks or best offer. So I don't know what I don't know how little of these were printed, uh, but uh, people are at least demanding a high uh, wad for them, whether they get it or not. Who knows? So there you go. But cool. I, I, overall, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, um, we do want to thank our Twitch Prime subscribers: Gvebke, Six MMBRX. Rushi MSX, Piplo, Pixels at Dawn Gaming, Chris Folds, of course, Bum Face Poo Hands, mm -hmm, of course, Brutal Barracuda, David Pick, Mohawk Mall, Picard 2010, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, Silver Streak 72, Go To Go Sub, The Devil Bunny, 
the slow Norris, Brother Bill, and Uber Scuba Driver. Mm. Thank you for uh, subbing on Twitch. Uh, we do uh, record this show every Friday live on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Um, and if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber and uh, you uh, want to toss us a sub every month, you can do it for free and support the show. Um, we've got a nice crowd here in the chat this evening. we got Picard 2010, Treyguard 82, Ricky DeRocher, Barkbit, uh, Brutal Barracuda, L. Curtis B., Jason Warns, Paul Kitching, Terror K, Jost 80, Galactics. Thank you so much Edvin. for joining us, guys. Edvin in the man cave. Hey, you know, I, mentioned, I see that Brutal's in the house. So we should mention that Brutal has put out some outstanding videos. We're going to go into some videos. On yeah, the, let's talk a little bit about the videos. Because this has been, our, a, we've had a pretty good, YouTube we've actually here. put out a lot of content this week. As he moves, and we're, he hones in the view. Mm -hmm. There it is. So. Gosh, what should we talk about first? I guess we should probably mention that we did a marathon. Yeah, <laughs> last week. Yeah, your outstanding job or promotion. Oh yeah, I listen. We it, I, we talked about it for months. So what are you gonna do? So, um, well, actually, before that, what should we do? have you announced that you got the one thousand on here yet? I don't know if you have. Have you? I can't remember. Uh, well, we talked about it a little bit maybe before we started the show. Yeah. So maybe we can we can bring that up. Yeah, first. get into that. So um, we started out with. Uh, I got an Amiga 1000 for Thanksgiving. It was the best Thanksgiving ever. Uh, my uncle rolled in, and uh, you know he's like, "I'm out of the car. I got something for you." And I thought I was going to help carry in some food. He opens the trunk, and bam, an Amiga 1000, a Commodore 64, um, a Gateway 2000, <laughs> and an old Gateway monitor. Big shoebox full of software, a joystick. Uh, the 1000 it turned out it had uh, it's got the extra front uh, 256 RAM, so it's Good. got a 512 stock, and then it's got that. it's got a two meg sidecar expansion. Looks just like the one I used to have on mine back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you're interested in, in seeing me, I clean it up, I fire it up. It, it actually it fired up just fine. The keyboard is uh, a little dirty, it needs a little cleaning, but uh, the keyboard works. I was able to negotiate. What really stood in my way, I believe, is that I didn't have a 1.3 kickstart, and I think that that was keeping a lot of things from happening. Which but, I brought you over. Yeah, but you brought me one, and uh, but as you can see here, I was able to connect it. Man, the 1000 is just, you know, I think we've talked about this before. The thing that I think turned me off of Amiga hardware forever was the fact that I started out with the worst possible solution. The 500 with the well, shoebox power supply. No, with, in terms of everything. The case was broken. It was just the dirt worst. It it's was the all, dirt it's, worst. It's all I had spare. Yeah, all you had spare while you hogged the 1200 to yourself. Hey, I paid top dollar for that 1200. Yay, man. I'm not I'm just I'm not saying, I'm just saying you you set me up to fail. No. Is, is what happened. Listen, the 500 was perfectly competent. Unlike, yeah. your, unlike yourself. The GBS 8200 board that we we needed to have make it work with the monitor. It was it was horrible. You blew that up, didn't you? I blew the first one up, uh -huh, and I bought go. a second one. Well, listen, it all came out in the So, line. yeah, the 1000 is great, because it's got video out, yeah. it's got the aesthetic, it's got yeah. the keyboard garage. Signatures. It's got the signatures, it's yeah. got everything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Good. Congratulations, Boat. Right. It's, like I was saying earlier, it's amazing that we both got 1000s within, like, a, what, about a month of each other? Yeah. It's yeah. quite remarkable. When I watched your video, you were a gleeful boy. I was. It made me happy to welcome you to the land of, of, of hardware owners, finally. It took long enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, so after that, why don't you talk a little bit about the Thanks for Giving Marathon? Yeah, so, here. of course, we were, we're over on Twitch. Ricky just asked if we were ever coming back to YouTube stream. No. We didn't leave. Well, we didn't leave YouTube streaming. YouTube they, streaming landed on us. They booted us uh, for jerkery reasons. And YouTube, as has been well documented, have got, taken leave of their good senses. Yeah. And they are screwing we people won't left be, and right. We shan't be returning. Yeah. Well, I mean, there you go. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do. But we can't go back at least until next year. So there you go. So we did our Thanks for Giving Marathon on Twitch. The Twitch. Uh, it was 10 big hours. This thing was put together by the Brent. I'll give the Brent full credit. Uh, we had a, Brent did a great job. He did a great job, uh, and uh, 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 we had a lot of fun. And Boat eventually joined us in about an hour, in the middle of hour three, I believe. And uh, we ran through a ton of games, and we played. We spun the wheel. We made many deals that day, uh, and uh, played a lot of games. And uh, so, if you are interested in watching me and the Brent and Boat play, I mean, we played things on the sword. 
So well, hard D. We played uh, uh, the VTech soccer we teams. The, we played uh, the So Crates. Mm-hmm. We played uh, stuff on the uh, the Dick Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, we played a bunch of crazy games. We played arcade games. We played everything. So if you want to see us play a bunch of crazy games and just chat and have a good time. Uh, you can roll over to our Twitch channel. Our boat, our Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash amigos retro game. And you can also, I am posting, I'm posting this up in uh, in sections uh, uh, on YouTube. I think we're up to section two or three is up there now. And we had a good turnout and had a lot of fun uh, on that show. So if you're interested in catching that, and that's just basically uh, as uh, as we mentioned, it's our way of saying thanks everybody for being so charitable. Yeah, and supporting not only uh, us but all of our charities and all the charities, and we really appreciate it. And uh, never have I had so much fun saying thanks. It was Absolutely. a lot. We had a great time. Absolutely. Let's talk about what Brutal Barracuda has been up to lately. Uh, he's been going. He's he absolutely out of his mind. So uh, let's let's look at this video that he put up this week. This is the best of publishers' Psygnosis top ten yes. Amiga games. Uh, he goes over, and these are great because it's a great way to quickly see, uh, kind of get a taste of, of a ton of different games all at once. And he really does highlight the best ones. I do want to direct your attention to uh, one of these YouTube comments down here at the bottom. Uh, it says, This bears out my opinion that the best thing about Psygnosis was DMA design. Psygnosis seems to be remembered much more fondly than they, did, than they deserve, in my review. They released a large amount of titles on the Amiga that were dreadful. This just further boys my right opinion that Psygnosis is the most overrated publisher in Amiga history, by far, bar none, end of story. It's hard to relate. Close that ad for a second. Let me see something here. It's hard to relate. I like the fact that, uh, by the way, these are, just to go back to the video, these are great videos, these things that, uh, is anyone more professional than, than Brutal? Nobody. By the way, Nobody. check his channel out. Uh, Brutal Barracuda has it plays some more modern stuff, and he's a, to say he's a good hand at these games, I mean, understatement, but he's a stud when it comes to video production. And he went through, if you if you haven't seen these yet, if you're listening to us, he goes through and puts in, he's ranking these by overall scores, he puts all the magazine reviews in. It's great. Mm-hmm. These are great videos. Now, you know, if Psygnosis, if if, if there was a, a champion of uh, art direction for boxes, that's, Psygnosis would win every time. That's what time. I was getting to. One thing it's now, and you're going to have to bear with me on this. You are looking at all these things after the fact, okay? When I was a young man and I saw these games and the boxes and the way they, pre- and they, were, where they were presented, it's like, it's, it's like the Bitmap Brothers, all flashed. No, substance. you've got to understand something. You're looking at this all wrong, okay? Psygnosis is a publisher. It's their job to put these games out in a appealing and interesting way and present them in the way that's going to make them the most money. Well, okay? yes, that's, and that's how companies work. Guess what they did? Their job. They did their job. Because yes, their they, games they, always they, looked awesome. They sold thousands of horrible games to impressionable young people that think, turned them off computer games forever. I think you're being Good a little, work, I think you're being a little harsh. Good uh, work. As, like, remember, we said this earlier. Boat loves or hates things. That's, There's no in-between. That's not I, true. I, on the other hand, can see Psygnosis for what they were. Marketing geniuses. People that had a good eye for I talent. can't believe that you're you're <laughs> you're playing up a company that marketed crap games to kids and saying that that was great. It was are they good they work. Did, they did a lot of good games. Mm-hmm. They did a lot of good games, and DMA doesn't didn't do all the games. It is the good a lot of good stuff. And by the way, someone mentioned that Walker. Someone got I think it was a seventeen yeah. percent. That is absurd because That's, it's a horrible game. That may be their best game. Oh it's my right gosh. up there. I love Walker, <laughs> Texas Ranger. And finally, Aaron. I took a little trip down memory lane with the Atari 1200XL. Uh, I, I, playing, you know, playing Donkey Kong at a breakneck speed. Yeah, after <laughs> after playing um, you know Donkey King a couple weeks ago on the Coco Show, I wanted to go back and play the uh, the 1200XL port. Yeah, and uh, I was like you said, I was surprised. It really runs at a clip, especially uh, if you're playing Donkey King, mm-hmm. which is a more authentic and complete version of Donkey Kong. But my God, it's it is slow. Yeah, this Donkey Kong not as complete, but it's like playing a rocket ship version. It zooms through. Yeah, yeah. And then I just had a good old time just playing very games we played some jump man yeah I, I watched this video and of course you know i love the jump man yeah I'm a big we played fan. this is this is 007 yes. this is the most bizarre this I is diamonds this. are forever i played this <laughs> in, when it came out believe it or not uh, I, because my buddy had it as i've mentioned that he had an atari and we played this game you know mm-hmm. i'm a big bond guy oh yeah 
And so, and I love Moon Patrol. So this was a game that I could get into, sure. although it is difficult. It's, it's, yeah. it's also bizarre. It's it not what bizarre. you think of when you think the of the fact that she's collecting, shooting, and collecting diamonds. Just, I mean, they really took a lot of lights. Yeah, and stuff. Uh, it was unfortunate. There was an error in my rampage. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I was unable to, uh, to to play Rampage, so I had to look at that later on. That is, yeah, that's um, bizarre. And and so and then we close things out with uh, Frogger Two 3 Deep, which was uh, it's a bizarre game it because is. I couldn't figure out how to end the level. I filled up all the logs with all the frogs, and um, I remember playing. How did you end the level? I, I ended the level by turning off the machine. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't get out of there. <laughs> that is bizarre. Yeah, Frogger. The, the sequels to Frogger. They've made. They've made hundreds of these things. Mm -hmm. You never. They never really caught on, did no, they? You know, no. So. No. They're the original still. That looks best, pretty good far. though. It's very colorful. It does look very good. Yeah. I like the Atari. I like when you go in there and play. Now, also, you should mention that you did play PP Hammer. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. That, I don't know if you put that on YouTube. Yeah, or I did. I, I moved it over to YouTube too, so you yeah. can watch me. You can watch me play PP Hammer. It's a good time. I enjoyed watching you play because. Uh, we were we learned very similarly, mm -hmm. you know. And usually, when I watch your playthroughs, I laugh and point and 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 I'm very amused at your pathetic attempts. Yes, but yes. this time, I since I hadn't played this game, I just had to sit there and go, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Aaron, it's time to talk about last year's last year's nothing. Last week's um, there it was <laughs> Patreon song winners. Oh man, there were no winners. <coughs> so uh, hideous. Yeah, we, uh, we there were quite a few. This was a this was a popular tune. And did you happen to guess it? I don't remember what it was, but I remember hating it. Uh, it was it was. In fact, I think after the show, I told, I expostulated on how horrible that was. It was a uh, paperback writer. <laughs> Are you familiar with that song? Oh yes. Okay. I was. So um, we want to congratulate the winners. Th these came in hot and heavy. It was uh -huh. easily guessable, except for one. Uh, Pack Billy, congratulations! He always gets Pix it. Yeah, Pack Billy, uh, Pixels at Dawn, Gary Hucker, Paul Kitching, Curtis Boyle, Seanzo, David Spencer, CBM Nut. First time I think we've heard from mm. CBM Nut, and Eric Nelson. Although I had to give Eric Nelson several hints over the week. <laughs> <laughs> just to jumpstart his brain, but he, he managed to get it in the end. You mean we may have talked this, but remember that old show, Name That Tune? Yes. You, you, the old one. Yeah. And at the end, well, there was only one. They favorite, never brought it back. I love that. No, yeah, they did. When? It was in like the 90s. Hmm. But anyway, remember they'd be like, they'd challenge each other. Like, I can end that tune in like six notes. Yeah. Five and then that was all. I always liked it when they would go, like, I can end it in one note. And then you'd go, <laughs> burn. And then. I just think of Pac Billy. There's your show. They would yeah. bring that back. But I mean, who can do that? It's yeah. Like, the clue is like blah blah blah. Like, and they just take it. And go burn. Yeah. Nobody can name that tune in one note. <laughs> I always thought that was funny yeah. though. And sometimes they'd get it right because they got it from the clue. Yeah, it was the clue. So funny. Right. Okay. So um, if you know this week's um, Patreon song challenge, you can send me an email at john at amigospodcast dot com. And uh, if you would like to sponsor the show, support the show, you can go to everythingamiga.com slash support, or just go to patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. Here we go. Oh, and I do want to welcome new uh, supporter, Iron Wolf. Welcome, Iron Wolf. Cool name. Absolutely. <clears throat> Iron Wolf Bjorn Terry Howard Reflection Simon Ledge Cap'n Crispy Kilobytes and Caffeine Mike and W Decker Three Put Gary Heather Free Lunch Kate Fox David Pickford Cameron Armstrong And D. Jones Lobster Minator Craig McClellan, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cave, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, a Joseph Harrison, Coletta, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Laramore, Andy Craig, Sean Zoe, Darren Lomax, Colin, 419, Bachman. Roland Book, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Leaf, Kellan, Alec, Kebab, Chicote Level, Old John Marshall, 
Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRoche, <laughs> Creepy Dead Boy, Vegas CTZ, The Slow Norris, Stephon Sorgorn, Mortensen, Edwin Helen, Blendo 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foles, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vib, Keelane Benson, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THG, Eric Nelson, Kim, Tommy, Hoom, Woodstad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal, Barracuda, oh, God. Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels of Dawn, and Kill Bjorn Barman. Man. You know, everyone on Earth has a range that they should work in vocally. Mm -hmm. Listen, you were too low. You were it's way low. low. Yeah. Mm. You said I was too high the other week. Every you have no range. <laughs> what are you saying? Your range should just be talking. Talking. That should be what, are, talking are, range. You, if anyone was born to rap, it's you. <laughs> That's what you should do. <laughs> should get together with MC Hammer. No. We put something together. No. And lay down some tracks. Horrible. Mm. That was that was horrible. You knew that one though. No. No one knows that. That's not a song. Mm. It's more something tribal. <laughs> Or like you know, what I'm saying it comes from the, the jungle. What are you saying? It, it was hideous. It was hideous. <laughs> I know you overused that word describing your singing, but it's the one that is appropriate. Mm. No one's getting that. Nobody. All right. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Next week it's our final normal show of the year uh, before well, we then have, they get crazy. Yeah, man. because then we have our Christmas episode and our New Year's spectacular. Our Christmas episode this week, Aaron. This, this year. We are going to uh, do a, uh, a sort of a showcase of the best Amiga demos of 2019. So we'll play some demos. It's we'll be awesome. have some chat. We'll have some people call in. Bring in some peyote. Yeah. Get crazy. It'll be great. It'll be great. I'm really looking forward to that because we've always wanted to do a demo show. And this is, this is finally our chance. So that's what we're going to do. But next week, Aaron, it's UFO enemy unknown all right or XCOM or if you XCOM will. yeah now you know uh, do you remember when we played this on the we played this during the Amigathon yes this was the the dark Amigathon the dark no that wasn't dark though that we that was no broadcast. that part part of that was 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 cut off we yeah. only got like remember the first 20 we, minutes of our but three we tried hours. to remember we at first we tried to play on the Xbox oh my gosh <laughs> Like We've I said, learned a lot about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Never again. Never again. <laughs> Never again. This week we'll be playing on the Amiga. Yeah, That's absolutely. What you do it. Hopefully, I'll be able to play it on the uh, Amiga 600 if it comes Ooh, in the mail in time. Sweet. So that would be really cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you next week. Adios. Adios. Hideous. I can't believe you didn't know that. I nope. thought that was one of my easier ones. Listen, you were up and down like a yo-yo. That's how you got to do it. No, man. it's not how you do it. No, <laughs> you you gotta you gotta leave them wanting more and oh, wanting man. less we want le No, you got that part down. <laughs> that was horrible. All right, oh, Gary. I didn't know you were in the house, yo. Gary, where's? Oh, there he is. Uh -huh. right there. Hey, Gary. Hey, we're we're gonna do some cocoa and some spectrum. If you wanna, if anyone wants to hang out, yeah, chill, I'm relax. Gonna, I'm gonna switch over our scene now. Last time I did this, my computer shut down. Have so. a relaxing evening with your friends, the Amigos. That's right. That's how. As they take you on a journey into retro gaming, the likes of which you've never seen in West Virginia. I feel like our levels are just out of control. You were pegging the uh, gimmick there. Yeah. Like a maniac. It was nonstop peg. And I'm sure that added to the overall effect of your song. <laughs> it, on, if you listen to this on the speaker, just... <laughs> I'm going to have you do the Patreon song next time. Swing. Yeah. You can do that. That would be fantastic. All right. Listen, I'm st I stay in my lane, Boat. You know what I mean? Is that like when you were talking about rap history? <laughs> Ricky, we make electricity, brother. Yeah. This is cold country. The uh, the electricity you use probably comes from us. Let's see. My papa dug that electricity out the ground. Yeah, he did with his teeth. No, he was a bad dude.
I'm not doubting the badness He's of your, bad dude your grandpa. And a great guy. Where are we at here? Iris Sinclair. Pig gravity. Oh, pie gravity. Yeah. I like pig gravity better. Yeah, well, we talked about this on the stream. Pie gravity or pig gravity is from Poland. Sweet. And uh, oh, man. he said it could go either way. Pie gravity or pig gravity, like a pig rave. Like a big pig <laughs> rave. <laughs> wow. And you know, <laughs> and you know <laughs> Ravi, which also right. works, he's DJing that sucker. Yeah, yeah. PP gravity. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm glad that my computer did not shut down. Nice work, computer. I'm going to go get some more fancy water. Oh, man. you fancy water. You drink too much of that stuff. Hey, that's what keeps me going. You know, my buddy at work's got an intestinal issue with soda pop now. You know, it's all the, all the uh, 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 what do they call it? Carbonation. The carbonation. Yeah, yeah. And Weird. you drink so much fancy water. What do you, you, I notice you keep messing with this. Well, I can't, my shoes are on backwards. I have a hard time. Why would you do that? Well, I don't know. I don't Especially know with your happened. feet. How could that possibly work? Well, I get all tangled up in the tablecloth. What are you, hold on a uh -oh. oh, now look at what you did. Yeah. There goes the camera. I don't even know how that happened. You were you were bebopping off your feet. But the feet are not connected. <laughs> you know All what? Right. You're fixing this. I'm going to use the restroom. And you have to stay here for a minute and fix it. No one can All see right. me go. If the stream disappears, it's because it's blue screened. Just also, because Boat's big feet whack something. All right. Here we go. That's okay. I'm revamping my computer setup too at some point. This is going to be it. All right, it worked. Huzzah, huzzah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what just disconnected from the computer there. Oh, it was the camera, but I don't know why. All right, well, I'll be keeping it real here. Edvin, are you um, awesome? Root, thanks for the uh, thanks for the cheer, man. Thanks for the bits. Um, I think bits are cool. I got some bits and I was I was spreading them around the uh, the Twitch streams. Um, you know, another thing, there are so many things that I like about Twitch that I just never realized were were there. But I think that the whole like um, it just seems like the whole stream like streamers have more of a community uh, on Twitch. I was watching a guy I like. Uh, his name's Big John. He does a lot of retro stuff, um, and uh, it just I don't know. It just seems more homey. Here than uh, than on YouTube. Oh, man. Wow. oh yeah, Kate Fox, Macintosh librarian. Thanks for the sub. Doesn't Kate Fox sound like somebody that was one of the Charlie's Angels? She probably was. Because remember, Kate Jackson was on there, and I don't know why. But Kate and Fox is sort of a Charlie's Angels sound of name. Mm-hmm. That's true. What do you think about Luscious Jackson? I like it. I think that was one of those. A wrestler manager named Luscious Johnny V. There was like a group of like female alternative rockers in the 90s and like Luscious Jackson was one. I think um, that was Baruch Assault. Remember I like that? Baruch Assault. Yeah, they're all, them work today. they're all kind of the same. They sang Volcano Girls and they sang, they had two big hits. My buddy was saying that they're from Chicago. Did you know that? No. And so they were a band in Chicago and they got discovered and they had those songs that were hits. And the record label was like, we're going to sign you, bam. They got signed. And the record label said, we're going to send you on tour. They're like, bam, we go on tour. They said when they came back to Chicago, everyone there hated them. Really? And they all said, we're like, what do we do? They're like, yeah, you guys sold out. And so that was in the Baruch Assault. You know what? If Given the opportunity to sell out, it would take me about 2.1 seconds. You? To get on that private plane. But you're a virtuous individual that would never sell out to the man. If, 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 uh... If, if they were like, Boat, we've been listening to your singing voice from afar, and we want to put you on tour. Let me tell you something. If a record label signed you, I don't know. That would be the... Unless Gigi Allen's label is still around. Or one of those artists, you know. I, I'm more of an experimental singer. <laughs> my name's Johnny Rotten. I think you'd be perfect for my new label. Bums. Was that bombs or bums? Bums. Okay. Because it's a double entendre. Oh, the camera locked up again. Did it really? Yeah. It's got to be something with the... Um... Look at me. Hold on. Look, you're laughing, getting up. <laughs> it's got to be something with the static electricity. We're working on it. Hold on. Boat spilled fancy water all over the computer. 
Oh, that's not good. See how it turned red like that? What's that mean? That means that we're in we're in for a BSOD here. I bet it's gonna happen. Watch three, two, one. It didn't happen. You can't call your shot of sucking. <laughs> Would you stop like, doing that? The, it's completely disappeared now. Listen. The camera's completely disappeared. I don't know what you were kicking. Well, it has to do with the, the, the USB hub. Hello, darkness, my old friend. You know, my kid says that occasionally. It's because it's a meme. We talked about that before. All kids say that now. Bingo. We saw no video, but bingo. Yeah, listen. Kate knows the score. All right. Take some ferrite cores, swallow those with water. That'll fix a problem. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Jazzy, sexy, sexy music. Okay. We're back. My boat. This is my new show, Aaron's Thoughts. Anybody in here watch? Uh, I know one person in here, you, Curtis, uh, since you're a part of the show. The uh, color computer has a talk show, Co Coco Talk. And uh, they were expostulating on Boat's uh, pathetic attempts to review Donkey King from a couple weeks ago. It was tremendous. I was so happy to be listening to that. I uh, I laughed, I laughed. I immediately messaged Boat. It was so funny <laughs> to see to see Bo <laughs> to see his idiocy be regaled on the on the Coco Talk. Amuse me, Slur <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Del Morte's got it, man. Yeah, that was funny, uh, Curtis. I got I got a hearty laugh out of that. I uh, yeah. My cocoa, I put it back together. Oh, Curtis, I got my uh, stuff in the mail, so hopefully this weekend I'll be putting that stuff in. Yeah, that was funny. Hey, Pixels, what's going on, dude? Oh, a party. Do tell. Did you, uh, what kind of party was it? Birthday party? Anniversary party? I'm dying to hear this. Who was it during, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who it was during the Taze Valley Classic Computer Club meeting that was coming back from a party. We were talking to them while they were driving through town. Oh, the 40th. That's brutal. It's all over for your buddy. You know, that's no good. Uh, once you hit 40, it's downhill, unfortunately. But uh, hey, I'm going to remind everyone again, in case you weren't here earlier, tomorrow night, if you are so inclined, I think starting about 7 o'clock, it will be the Taze Valley classic computer club meeting uh, it'll be myself the boat uh, making his triumphant return will be the chad the chud our buddy matt the brent will be in, in, in here as well and god knows who else and we're gonna be doing some amiga 1000 i'd say we'll be doing that for sure we'll be doing some atari 8-bit and some coco tomorrow we'll be on tap so it should be a lot of fun Oh yeah, Pixels, you're a young man. You got time. Barkbit knows the score. <laughs> Curtis, you don't look a day over forty, my friend. And plus, you got hair. It goes a long way. Oh man, <laughs> keep waiting, Del Morte. It didn't come to me when I was forty-one. We're talking about getting old. Way to walk, boat. Hey man, I got jacked up feet. What'd you trip over? My feet. Your feet aren't jacked up. My feet is my my feet are a walking pile of jacked up. They are. Yeah. I don't pay attention to that stuff. I'll be honest with you. And also, I tripped over my sandal. That's okay. Well, then, what do you blame on your own feet for? That's what I do. What you just make excuses for stuff? Yeah. I thought you were gonna blame Donkey King for something somehow. You. No. We we're just talking about that. Hey, Kate. Forty six. I mean, you guys look great. Fifty two. Oh, Curtis, buddy, that's not that bad. <laughs> I wish I jacked up feet that way. Hey, uh, hey, Kate, can, can I put that now. picture of you up on the stream that you just posted? Check this out. Hold on a second. Where'd it go? Amigos podcast. Bam. I love it. Kate's wearing her uh, her that, gamble train shirt. Look at that set up in the background. That is what I'm talking about. Yeah. 27 monitors. Yep. It, just, it looks like NORAD <laughs> back there. <laughs> That's how you do it, man. Gary, yeah, I'm cough 40, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I like it. Looking good, Kate. Yeah. 
Where where is Kate located? She's in Texas. I take Great Houston, state of right? Texas. Yeah. Man, it's warm down there right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. I'm, I'm waiting for Kate to get the okay to uh, put it up on the stream. Put it on still store cam bot. Oh, okay. Sorry. Just saw it. Okay. Boom. Boom. What's happening? There we go. There we go. Yeah. 70 degrees. You're killing me. Looking great, Kate. It's 40 degrees here and cold. It's cold and wet. Support our Sinclair and listen, I... I hear Monday is the last good day and then it really tilts southward. Really? Yeah, I heard Tuesday it's all it's all over. On mm -hmm. like Wednesday it's super over. We're going to get it. We're in deep trouble. But. Well, the snow better hold off until after... Uh, you said Wednesday it's going gonna, it's gonna to be bad? Yeah. Okay, as long as it's after... Um, as long as it's after the concert. Hopefully the Germans can get out of here. Um, oh yeah, wrong wrong gimmick here. Man. Yeah. You ready to kick it off with some ZX? Yeah, man. It's gonna be awesome. Okay. I took I took copious amounts of well, not really, but I I know what I know what I know. I say what I said. We're coming. We're going. You gonna play the opening? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm reminding you without saying no, you're too dumb to see, remember. See how, see how my hands are here like this? When is the voicemail? Is that for Coco? That's for Coco. Okay. Thank you for continuing to remind me there. All right, so a little bit of silence. Support Our Sinclair and listen ad-free. Go to patreon.com slash Our Sinclair. Our Sinclair is also brought to you by the Div MMC feed. Do that again. Okay, there we go. Loser. Try again. Support our Sinclair and listen ad free. Go to patreon.com slash our Sinclair. Our Sinclair is also brought to you by the Div MMC Future from the future was 8bit.com. Quit waiting on tapes and fooling around with wave files and load your games instantly with the Div MMC Future, a jumperless, switchless SD storage solution for all ZX spectrums from the 16K all the way to the plus three. Get yours today at the future was 8bit.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, the day has finally arrived oh, where we look man. at the ZX Spectrum port of Donkey Kong. That's my jam, yo. Yeah. Now, Donkey Kong is your all-time favorite arcade Correct game, right? Correct window. Tell me about the first time you ever played Donkey Kong. Oh, gosh, boat. Well, I believe the very first time that I ever saw Donkey Kong was in the arcade, of course. It wasn't an arcade though. This was a there's a local chain of department stores in West Virginia. There were, and it was called Murphy's. This Murphy's. Is like Hex. It's like Hex, and it was uh, in uh, Dunbar, West Virginia. You know where Dunbar is? Yeah, you go there, you, you get stabbed the, in the face. You know where the old toll bridge is? Uh, no. As you go, you know the bridge goes from Dunbar to South Charleston. Yeah. Okay, to the left of that on the Dunbar side, there's like a shopping plaza there, right? Oh, man. And there used to be a Murphy's right there. I don't think I've ever been there. No one has now. Yeah. But Murphy's was a pretty big deal. And they had an area, uh, a little arcade area set up in there, and they had a Donkey Kong. And I believe that's the first time I saw Donkey Kong. It would have been right when it came out. And they ended up having the Donkey Kong Jr. there, too. I bet they converted it. It's what I probably did. And I remember looking at this thing, I'm like, my God. I've said this many times in the show, but this happened again. I was like, this is the best graphics I could ever get. Mm -hmm. They'll never be any more realistic. I, it was like playing a cartoon. Mm -hmm. It had a cool, you knew right away what was going on. But I was horrible at it, because it's really hard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Donkey Kong Jr., I played a lot more in the arcade, because I was better at it at the time. But Donkey Kong's one of those games that you can just, I play it, I bet I played it, I've played Donkey Kong probably once a month since it since I was able to, for years and years, I've, at least once. I played a lot, I've played a ton of it in the past couple weeks, and I just love it. And so when I heard that we were going to, even though you uh, brutalized Donkey King, when I heard we were playing it on the Spectrum, what was the, what the, I, I think I told you on the phone, or at least sent you a message, what did I say to you? Do you remember what I said? Mm -hmm. I said, Boat, 
I will review this, but please don't brutalize Donkey Kong again. I just can't handle another beat down. Yeah, you you took my remarks on Donkey King as if I was insulting a loved one. Yes. Because you have that kind of a feeling, that kind of a, an affection for Donkey Kong. Yes, correct. I'm like the protector. I'm Donkey Kong dragging his lair. I feel like it's my, I'm duty bound to not let people murder. I understand. Now, how many Donkey Kong cabinets have you owned in your life? Two. Two. Two, yeah. I've owned it twice. And uh, this, the one I've got now, I have, we had to recap the monitor on. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love it. And I, trust me, it was one of the games that got sold in the great sell-off when I lost my job at Lexmark and Slash IBM in the, in the uh, 90s, late 90s. That was horrible. I had to sell off uh, WWE four-player WWF WrestleFest, which I loved. I had to sell off my Donkey Kong. I had to sell off a Miss Pac-Man and I had to sell off my Time Killers meme cabinet that I built, built with my own two hands, and Road Blasters. It was it was bad. I hated that. What is the what is it about Donkey Kong? What is what do you why do you like it so much? Because it's it's a game that has been effectively solved. Well, what do I like? Not by me, it hasn't. The draw to Donkey Kong for me, well, of course, you know, it's like putting on the old shoe. The old, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I love it because I'm familiar with it. Sure. But what makes it great is that really no two games are the same. And the premise of it is just fun. It's got, you know, it's this is before Nintendo had established itself as the company that made fun, interesting, unique games. And did, But this is really their kickoff. I mean, cutesy characters, they, that's what mm -hmm. they make their bread and butter on. Varied gameplay, you know, the levels are all different. They play different. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's got a lot of replayability. Listen, uh, when the original Mario uh, Brothers came out, the arcade game, which was not too long after this. About two years later. Great game. Mm -hmm. I loved it, too, mm -hmm. for different, totally different reasons. There wasn't play Donkey Kong at all. And then Super Mario came out, the Nintendo uh, game on the NES. And I'd never seen a game like that in my life. Mm -hmm. and, it, and again, these are all sort of the same game, but sort of not. They right. took the same principles from mm -hmm. the original Donkey Kong. They've managed to spin that original game into a fran multiple franchises that have made countless of billions of dollars over the years and have kept the concept fresh in a lot of the games. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you look at Donkey Kong Jr., which was the follow-up, uh, the gameplay elements are sort of similar, but the, if it's a total role reversal. It doesn't play any, or feel anything like the original oh, yeah. Donkey Kong. And mm -hmm. it's fun on its own right. Now, when you get into Donkey Kong 3, you know... Things started to come off well, the rails. It, it, well, it was, a, it was a different development team. Everything was different like about it. the other game. Because by the time Donkey Kong 3, you got to remember, Miyamoto is the guy behind Donkey Kong. Right. And by the time Donkey Kong 3 came out, he was already working on Super Mario Brothers. Well, He'd already left this, the building. A lot, at Donkey Kong 3, gets a lot of, of, of abuse. But... If you take, if you remove Donkey Kong's name sure, from it, sure, uh, it is a unique, uh, unusual attempt to combine platforming and shooting into something. Which again, you're really tw you're twisting genres in a time that that was a very unusual thing to do. Yeah. So it had its place, but sure. yeah, but I go back to it over and over. I've never gotten my fill. That's just, that's the way I am. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Let's talk a little bit about the ZX Spectrum version sure. of Donkey Kong. So, uh, you'll recall that uh, the original Kong, the arcade version, again, you mentioned it, uh, Miyamoto's genius stroke here, kicked off his career. Because mm -hmm. uh, up until this point, <laughs> Nintendo had put out a million different arcade games, and they were all terrible. And they were they were all no good, and um, you know there's I can't, the, I can't totally get that because I have to go back and see what they put out. Oh, trust me, I, I've played a lot of their early stuff. Did you play that? Was it Radar Scope? Radar Scope is what they used to convert all see, these. I didn't hate that. Well, the thing is that they were just very derivative. Yeah. They were very you know people people praise Nintendo these days for being very original. Yeah. But back in their early days, they were anything but. You know. Um, uh, I believe the story goes that Miyamoto, this was not the game he was originally supposed to make. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I can't recall what the game was supposed to be. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I believe he made this game out of the the remnants of Radio Scope. Well, they, they, they put this game in Radio Scope yeah. cabinets. So he, had, he, was, yeah. he was restricted to what he could use graphically mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, so anyway, this game was out in in eighty one. Of course, I think by now everyone is, is pretty familiar with Donkey Kong, the arcade game. It 
spawned the sequels. It kicked off Nintendo as a viable uh, company for video games. It spawned commercials, lunch boxes, and all points in between. Mm -hmm. It still is generating money to this day. Oh, yeah. It's still you, the little mini arcade cabinets. This is the second or third time around for that. For yeah, I, I played Mario Odyssey for the first time the other day. That's yeah. where. And then, of course, uh, 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 Donkey Kong was ported to... I've got, I'm not going to go over this whole list, but I mean, literally, the most obscure things you could think of, like the the TI-99, this was a this was a DOS booter. It's on all the consoles for all the time. Mm -hmm. It's clones are everywhere. We talked about Donkey King on the Coco. Uh, the 2600, uh, of course, the uh, ColecoVision uh, version, very uh, very well known for kicking off the Coleco and, and being the well, and the the uh, the Famicom, the NES in Japan was programmed to play the most accurate version of Donkey Kong possible. That was its job, in much the same way that the Coleco Vision was designed around Donkey Kong. Yeah, here. and it's funny. We, I mentioned earlier that I played all these different ports of Donkey Kong, and I actually played the Nintendo version quite a bit mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks. And I will say, uh, it is. T the tippity top. Yeah, it's very. It, it doesn't have. It's not one hundred percent perfect, but it's very good. Yeah, it's and a shame that the limitations of the cartridge didn't allow all all the levels. Right, right, there, right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, uh, I was excited. I had not played uh, the Specky version of this, but I thought the Specky had a chance to put together an excellent version of, yeah. of Donkey Kong. I, this is I thought so too. And so, I, this is one of the few times that I uh, watched a video before I actually played the game, and I watched a, a, a fellow play through this, and I thought to myself, let's have a look at this thing. You know, what what do I, because I, having played this so many times, I can spot the little things. And so I just jotted down some notes, just the stuff I liked right out of the gate, okay? So, and we and having played so many of these, a lot of these features aren't around in some other versions. So, uh, if you've played Donkey Kong enough, you'll realize that certain things are standard. For example, at the beginning of the game, the very first barrel that drops straight down is the oil barrel that lights the fire in the, in the uh, barrel at the bottom of the screen. Well, the, in the Sinclair version here, it even says oil on it. It comes down like it's supposed to, mm -hmm. which is good. The sounds are pretty good. I will say the in-between tune is hideous. Oh, yeah. Uh, hideous. It makes you wonder why they even put that in at all. How could was... you? I mean, it's so far <laughs> out of tune. It yeah. makes me wonder if they... I mean, those notes exist. Yeah. You know, that... So that is a, a, a I mean, it's, it's very a, strange. It's, it's just, it's odd. Why? Because surely they knew it sounded so bad. It's hideous. Yeah. And the, the fact that, and I looked at, this game was developed by, uh, uh, it was published by Ocean, uh, but it was, uh, uh, the guys that put it together were called Sentience Software Limited. Uh, and they were comprised of three fellows that worked on this, and, uh, and of course, another guy that did the cover art. So you had John Mullins. Uh, John Mullins uh, worked on some pretty good games here, uh, Boat. You've got Winter, uh, the Games Winter Edition, remember mm -hmm, those? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mega Mon, Night Shift, Power Drift, WEC Le Mans, Taipei, and Scrambled Del Scrabble Deluxe. His, uh, another, the other fellow that worked on it was Clive Paul. He worked on the Games Winter and Summer Editions, Double Trouble, Go for the Gold, Guerrilla War, Power Drift, Taipan and Falcon, and then a guy, the third guy that worked on this, and I don't know if this is the music guy, but his name was just simply listed as Sheik. Oh, Sheik, and he worked on Road Race, uh, and it said the cover artwork for this was done by Xavier Leslie Carbarja. Which is interesting because the cover art seems to be a direct ripoff of the side art of the arcade machine. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, and just go into the particulars. Yes, this is a, yeah, this is a, works on the 48K. You've got all the. I didn't have any trouble with the interfaces. I played. By the way, I tried this with joystick and keyboard. We'll get into that later. And was released at a, an original price. To get this, it was only eight pounds, which I'd well, that's the nice. that's the going rate for most. Of course, new it was released titles. in '86. So, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute too, because that was sort of something that hindered it. So, anyway, getting back to the things I noted. So, uh, aside from the little tune, horrible things that I liked. That's got the cutscene. Kong climbs the uh, mm -hmm. thing. He stomps. Mm -hmm. he, he stomps in the middle of it, but still he stomps. Right. He when he throws barrels, he actually reaches for the barrels, mm -hmm. right? Which is I good. noticed that too. Pauline actually says help. Right. On the screens that she appears. Mm -hmm. uh, after the level's over and you win, Kong actually grabs her and leaves, as opposed to just disappearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, it does have all four levels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the levels are in their pretty much in their appropriate style. One of the things it did that I thought was a very clever thing to do was much like, uh, actually, uh, 
Donkey King didn't do this, but it actually made room for all the girders. But on this one, the the last bottom girder on the first screen is just only partially visible mm. after Kong stomps, but they managed to get all the girders on there that way. That's smart. That's a smart way to do it. Yeah. Um, I noticed that on the rivets level, uh, I, I it, normally you jumped over a rivet, it would go away, but sometimes it wouldn't. So which is sort of like Donkey King. I don't know. I couldn't really get any right. Well, in Donkey King, you never the it rivet never, never yeah. goes away. But I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Um, the on the second round, when you get past the first the four stages, the barrel comes down fairly correctly. That with the, with the sideways, the sideways yeah. barrel. So when I was watching this play, I thought, okay, this looks pretty good. Now, of course, it's got the usual spectrum shortcomings. Uh, the uh, for example, your your jump man is just straight up white. Mm -hmm. All the gifts that you pick up, all the stuff that Pauline dropped is white. There, are every all the characters are solid colors. Right. Donkey Kong's red. Donkey Kong looks a lot like Yeti. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, didn't yeah. you think you could have plucked him? Yeti looks like he made a special guest appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, listen to ARG's Yeti episode, um, Pauline's just sort of a solid color. You know, of course, this is the stuff you would expect. Uh, the colors aren't arcade accurate. The fireballs also are white. This is the this is just spectacular. But I mean, stuff. yeah, nothing that would affect the gameplay. But I'm no. just pointing it out. Um, so overall, I thought, man, this looks okay. I, I think this is going to be. I think this is going to be pretty good. And I had flipped over and saw that some of the early re reviews from our listeners. Like we're not very positive. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, what are these? These guys must be on our nuts. This looks to me. This looks really good. Mm -hmm. And so I took uh, fired up my uh, emulator, fired this thing up, and then I found out what the problem was. And this game, for all of the things that they did right, they did some things horribly wrong. And what's horribly wrong is the movement, is particularly the ladder movement of Jumpman. He goes up and down these ladders painfully slowly. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't think that affects the gameplay of this, uh, I mean, it well, literally it, it, ruins the game. Oh, yeah, because it, the ladders are the game. Yeah, That's it, what you do as Mario or as Jumpman. You Jumpman, climb ladders. This game has two major failings in terms of the gameplay. The first is uh, Mario or Jumpman is painfully slow in the ladders. And secondly, uh, the jump, the jumping... Uh, the, the hit detection, I guess, is brutal. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's bad, but if you ever play this in the arcade, you could sort of almost even touch the enemies before you get killed. Right. And this, if you're in the same neighborhood, you're done. The enemies also have an AI to where they come at you, they f almost flock to you, and not and not like the arcade or any of the other. Yeah, it, it, you know, we're watching the uh, the girder level now. And you know, on the uh, the the AI on the the arcade game is you know sometimes the guys feel like they're pursuing you, but sometimes it seems like they're going about their business. It's sort of like the Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in this game, they they really flock to you. This, you know, I, I I'm going to say this without trying to be arrogant. I'm a pretty good hand at Donkey Kong. Okay, this game was so hard and frustrating that I could not get off the first level for hours. I just sat and played it, oh, and I am—I know what I'm doing. Now, one thing I noticed is the playthroughs I watched. A lot of people would hang out on the ladders a lot longer mm -hmm. than I would. Yeah, that's what I noticed and too. And let the barrels just roll by, and they mm -hmm. wouldn't fall. The barrels don't come down the the ladder that often, but they still do occasionally. For, for a while, I didn't think they did at all. But if you sit and watch, but they do come down eventually. Uh, so you can't just hang out on the ladders. But I think a lot of it is straight up. You don't have a choice. You mm -hmm. have to play. In a way that's not normal, you would never wait and let three or four barrels go past you in those ladders. You would get smushed. Right. Uh, in this, you have no option. You have to let them go by, and it's not realistic the arcade. But it's not just that because I can get past it. It's just not that good. Uh, the barrels careen off the sides of the girders on the on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, first level. Uh, in a bizarre way, in the arcade, my favorite strategy on that top level is to hang out right of the ladder and let the barrels come over and then jump them on this mm -hmm. it's uh, that's almost impossible something else that's almost impossible is just to jump straight up and clear a barrel right right and that's to me you know you talked about what kills the game that's what killed the game for me because that, that's a big you know i'm not nearly as good at donkey kong as you are but part of my strategy is as they come to me i hit up or i hit jump and then i can just jump over it yeah. and it goes below in this game you can't do that or if you can i wasn't successful at it. i did it a couple times but it's not you can't rely on the 
let me I've talked on give me your overall thoughts about this when you fired it up well I think that it all comes down to in a game like this you have to have it doesn't matter how things act they need to be they need to act in a particular way that is predictable okay so like for example if there's a rule that says you can't jump straight up and clear a barrel well I can accept that what I can't accept is like two identical movements one giving me one result and one giving me another result and that's that's a really what this game suffers from. Um, I could not get past the first stage of this game, but I was not surprised by that because I can't get off the first stage of Donkey Kong sometimes when I play, and um, Donkey King I could not get off the first stage. So I, uh, you know, I put that down to just my inability to play this game well. I did find myself having more fun with this game than Donkey King though because of the speed. Um, I can abide most things in old games but one thing I can't abide well is an old game that plays slow and Donkey Kong plays slow or Donkey King plays slow this game plays more akin to the um, to the arcade game although would you say that this moves faster than the arcade game or about the same on the ladders this is the slowest one and mm -hmm. I mean listen comparing these to the to the Coco or the 8-bit but it's this game has a, one thing. Listen, the eight bit we mentioned since we've talked a lot of Donkey Kong, eight bit plays too fast. The Coco version. But you're talking plays, about the Atari. Atari 8 -bit. bit. The Coco version plays too slow. This one actually plays okay, but what where they botched it is that it, and this has a more fatal flaw than either of the other two, and that is the jump mechanic is not good, but more importantly, is the ladder, the speed on those ladders is just, it's like you're climbing 10 yeah. stories. So, you know, I didn't come in to Donkey Kong knowing that I was gonna love it because I don't love Donkey Kong. I actually, I, it's just not one of my favorite games to play. Um, I, bet you were I bet you were loving life when you saw this pull up <laughs> on the draw. It was quite funny. <laughs> um, I don't think that the game looks bad. No, no. Um, I think that, you know, for the, for the it looks like a spectrum, it looks like the spectrum version of Donkey Kong should look. Yeah. And it plays fast. You know, the thing about the Spectrum, given, you know, everything about its limited palette and, you know, what kind of graphics it is played, the games run smoothly and they run quickly. And this game, it does that. But just the difficulty made it a non-starter for well, me. Well, and the, the barrels and the speed is almost, it's funny, this is a contrast. And the contrast is, your guy moves fast, the barrels move fast, the fireballs move fast, they all move super fast. But... You move like super duper slow on the ladders, and that's all it takes to ruin the game. Mm -hmm. Listen, this game's a winner in everywhere, but basically a one department. I can get past. I mean, I got some other nitpicks on here, like uh, you don't see Pauline on the girder level, which is okay because again, they got they got it Should right. Should we talk a little bit about how Pauline appears in this game? She appears as if she's off in the far distance because yeah. she's about maybe a quarter of the height of Jumpman and it appears to be a stick figure. But I can forgive um, that stuff. I, mean, I don't yeah. know. It seems weird that you actually go to the trouble to draw a pretty passable Jumpman and Donkey Kong looks about as good as he does anywhere. Well, they, they um, have to fit the whole game. In. They, I mean, listen, they did but it she, right. She's literally a stick figure, though. She is, but I mean, they got they got her they got the gameplay right. That's all the aesthetic. I mean, you can, I, yes, it's something you can complain about. It's just weird. It's they just got, weird. The hammer placements are right, which that's fine. They they did everything right except for the ladders. The la and the fact that the fireballs and the everything is too fast. Mm -hmm. It's all too fast. So what you get is the hardest Donkey Kong I think I've ever played. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong, Donkey King is difficult, but this is really, the, everything in Donkey King is slow. This is like Donkey King's going up and down ladders with 8-bit Atari speed. It's mm. deadly. Mm. And it ruined the game. Mm -hmm. I had to, I hate to admit this, uh, because I, I love Donkey Kong and I say I'm good at it. I had to use save states all the time. and had to reload over and over and over just to see all the levels. Embarrassing. I thought the elevator level was the one that was the least uh, uh, abusive because on that one there's no roid, there's very little ladder climbing, so you can actually get up and down it pretty easy. The the, the rivet stage is brutally difficult because the fireballs are so fast. Yeah, that stage, the cement factory, I should mention that at the top in the arcade, uh, Donkey Kong goes back and forth on the uh, on the uh, uh, conveyor belt and moves him. On this one, he doesn't move at all, and and also unlike the Japanese ver the uh, build Donkey Kong where you have to actually get up to, to the top and then go and get up to the top where Pauline's at. This is like the American version where you just have to get to that top level where Donk, Donkey Kong's at. But like I said, in the arcade, he moves back and forth. He doesn't move in this one. And the, the uh, conveyor belts move kind of weird 
on that screen. But I mean, and also on the conveyor belt screen, once a couple fireballs get out, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. You have a zero percent chance. It's super difficult. Uh, the the difficulty on this is too high, and the it's too it, the ladder is too slow. So it, this is a a hard F for me, and which is a shame because they got so they got so much of it right, mm -hmm. Bode. Uh, but there you go. Um, I looked up some uh, scores on this thing. Now, uh, the World of Spectrum, uh, these guys are pretty generous sometimes. They gave this a 7.92 out of 10. Yeah, I think that's high. Uh, Sinclair uh, User gave it three stars. Uh, your Sinclair gave it five out of 10. And Crash gave it 48%. So those are all basically Fs, except for the World of Spectrum. And uh, this may be one of the old rose tinted glasses. Uh, sort of things. Did we get any uh, listener looks at this? We did. We did. And just a reminder that if you are a Patreon supporter of Our Sinclair, you can join us on our Discord channel and chat with us and also post reviews on here, just like Chris Folds did. He says, as soon as you see the Ocean logo, you know it's a dice roll for quality. Ain't that the truth? Uh, as a Donkey Kong fan, I didn't enjoy this port at all. It doesn't play correctly at all, and I just couldn't get into it. Four out of ten. Graham Vebke says, I wanted to like this, but as Chris said, it does not play well. In fact, it's too fast, which is something I never thought I would say about the Spectrum. The sound is not great and the art is average, but at least it isn't jarring. A real disappointment. The ColecoVision and the Coco versions are vastly better. 4 out of 10. And finally, Pixels at Dawn, who I believe suggested this as a member of Clive's Club, he said, this is definitely a case of I remember this being better. <laughs> art is okay, I guess. I always thought the graphic on the level intro screen was a guy stuffed in a barrel, and I stand by that. <laughs> Sound tries, but is generally poor. Horrible. I think the gameplay is generally okay, and jumping barrels works fine, except for what I can only assume is a bug where two barrels together are not spaced to be jumpable like the arcade original, meaning you have to rely on luck to get past that at the first stage. Once that's done, though, it's pretty fun. All the levels are recreated, but oddly in the wrong order. But it doesn't quite feel like Donkey Kong. Close, but no cigar. Six out of ten. I think this is presented in the in Japan. The order's different. Mm. I believe because in this version you get you get uh, the the uh, first level, the traditional you know the girders. Then you get the second level. When this one is the cement factory, then you get the elevators, and then you get the uh, rivets. I believe that's the way it was in the Japanese version of the arcade. The, the levels are different in, in the arcade version from Japan than it is from the States. Mm. So, yeah, I agree. I think they pretty much nailed it. Uh, 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 it makes me sad, and this is one that if someone could go in there and pull some of their crazy Sinclair Spectrum magic, just double the speed on the ladders mm -hmm. and maybe slow the barrels and the fireballs down by about a third. Then you got everything else was fine. Well, it's funny you mention that because there has been a Donkey Kong for the Specky release just within the past month. Um, however, I don't believe that they did any of the things that you mentioned. I think that they just fixed the colors. <laughs> but maybe we'll have a look at it on a future computer club. You know, with your with your uh, incredible success with the Atari hack of Donkey Kong, this is your chance to go for it again. Yeah. Because there can't ever be enough Donkey Kong in your life. It's, does it, how I does know. it feel that your most all-time most successful solo video was that Donkey Kong video? Cuts like a knife. It cuts like a knife. Even <laughs> get, glaring at me from the, across the room, my Mario Brothers cab, of course, is not a real Mario Brothers cab. It's a DK Jr. Mm -hmm. conversion. So You're a lucky man, Boat. All right. It is time to announce, Aaron, the first annual Listener Awards for our Sinclair. This is something we've done with the Amigos uh, for the past five years, and uh, we wanna start it with our Sinclair now that we approach our one year anniversary. For the last show of the year, we're actually gonna do a best of show uh, where uh, we poll the listeners and have them vote on the favorite games that we've covered so far, or covered in 2019. Um, so you can go to vote.oursinclair.com and uh, there's a survey there where you can choose the best shooter, the best uh, you know, uh, action game, all the different categories. Um, and um, we, uh, we, we hope to get a lot of responses and have a real nice award ceremony here on uh, December 27th when we, when we film that show. That's gonna be fun, because I do wanna go back and kind of touch on some of the old, it's amazing, uh, we've, how long has this show been cooking now? I think we almost 40 weeks. That's, <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, 
there's a lot. Of, I would like to go back and do a little review mm-hmm. on some of these. But I mean, I think there's plenty of good games uh, to uh, pick from. Yeah, uh, we we were very fortunate. Of course, We've we done, had the, the committee. Took yeah, care of Fives it, Club right really now. does a great job selecting the games that we play each week. We appreciate them. Mm. Um, we do tape this show uh, live every every Friday on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Uh, I want to take a second to thank our Twitch subscribers: Silver Streak seventy two, Tapes from the Crypt. The Slow Norris 6MMBRX, um, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, Math Dufort, Muggy7, Brutal Barracuda, Bumface Poo Hands, Uber Scuba Diver, Peeplo, Go To Go Sub, Still Adolescing, Brother Bill, <laughs> Anguish Autour, The Devil Bunny, Midgard73, Rushi MX, and Hasifa. Thank you so much for subscribing on Twitch. We Fine really folks. appreciate Fine that. Folks, yeah. One and all. And um, of course, you know, if you'd like to sponsor the show through Patreon, you're welcome to do so. Patreon.com slash our Sinclair. Um, and uh, if you have any feedback for us, of course, feedback at our Sinclair.com, especially our new users, Aaron. This is the first show many people are hearing because it's appearing on our Amigos uh, retro gaming feed. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the Amigos. Uh, you want to go over that? Uh, well, th- there will be a message at the beginning of this I podcast that I'll record Very good. Uh, to, to slot in there. But, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys and what you think about the show. So, uh, all that said, I'd like to thank our supporters on Patreon, Andrew Waite, Jeff Owen, David Spencer, Cap and Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn doing a great job modding over in the chat. Chris Folds, Paul Harrington, and Christopher Hassel. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And next week, Aaron, uh, for our last Sinclair, our Sinclair game of the year. Our season finale. Our season finale. It's going to be back to school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back, back to, school. to school. Now, we that, that's the sequel to School Days, is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Can't wait. I love. I remembered something. I love school day or school days, and I can't wait to play back to school. I remember having a cursory look at that, and it looked really interesting. So yeah. yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks as always for listening. We'll see you next week, and until then, rewind tape and press play. Bam. Yeah. Press play. Pull. I did have to look down at it at that time. Pathetic. I forgot you actually what had to that say. written on there. Yeah. You're a geek. I have to read it because I don't remember. You're it's a, a weird tagline. Yeah, it is. That was a I really that was I wanted to love that game. No, thank you, Gary. The Huck. Huck just got himself a new a uh, new a- uh, adding machine. Really? A new like a the big metal gimmick. Yeah. That's right, Ricky. We tape all these on a VCR and then I run them through my capture card up to YouTube. That sounds like what I do. <laughs> what a jerk. You mocking my setup, bud? It's the best. And then I load it through the C6, whatever Flack used to say. Yeah. Load it through the C64. I love the loading time. Loading burp, time. Burp, 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 that stupid song. He needs to come back. Hey, he needs I, to come yeah, back. I thought he was back. Now listen. I miss him every day. You see this tome right here? I've got uh, uh, I've got plenty to say here on the, on these Coco games. Well, Duncan, we're going to be checking out. We, you know, we've got the Amstrad here. And uh, there is, uh, I think we're going to be getting a, uh, a SCART Amiga, yeah, yeah. yeah, a SCART cable. Um, Not and, Amiga, no, Amiga, sorry, Amstrad to SCART cable. So, uh, man, I can't wait to mess with that thing. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It's going to be great. Let's, let's, start with, let's start with Rampage. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cross your fingers. We're going to switch the scene again. That's what it was. By hey, way, it worked. They were saying that, they were saying that uh, a Pauline lit. The her diminutive size that looked like, that looked like you on the uh, marathon. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, 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 That's true. I saw that. I was like, I'll, I'll laugh my butt off. Yeah. Oh, geez, Evan, what are you trying to do? Kill me? You know, there was a guy on on uh, Twitter. Yeah. That well, I, you know, I posted the new info about the show, and he's like, "So do you guys do this full time?" And I was like, "No, we don't do this full time." Are you kidding me? You know the Twitter. Let's talk about this Twitter. Okay. You know what did I tell you a couple weeks ago? I'm going to do the Twitter. All right. Twitter is hard for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, because I look over the people that I have on my Twitter list, right? And I got some good people in there. I think a lot of our you got buddies, me on there. I got you. You know, I've got the, the Pixel Gaiden guys. Mm-hmm. I've got Pixel Vixen and uh, and uh, Neil and uh, you know our, the LGR and stuff like that. 
and everyone, so it's if here I said, it's like, okay, it's time to, to do the Twitter. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're getting ready. And I'm looking at what these people have said. I'm looking at their various, and they're all clever. And I'm like, here goes, here goes Aaron. You know, let's get in here. And I just sit there, I'm like, I like pie. You know, that's not going to work. Like, his son is hot. I got nothing. No. I'm not clever enough to be on Twitter. You, because you, you've you got to compress your thoughts into a clever, digestible, like, tidbit that makes you look great. Yeah. Or it's all amazing. about it's I about got, glorifying yourself while shaming others. Listen, I can't do it. I know. Because I am I'm shameful. great at it. I'm, oh, I'm no good. <laughs> and so then it's time to comment on someone else's wacky comment, okay? Well, I suck at that, too. I've got nothing. I got nothing to put on Twitter. And so I, and I don't have a ton of people on my Twitter, so there's not much going on. Now, I see people link, uh, like, they'll be like, hey, uh, the new episode of Pixel Gaten's out. And it'll, and it'll be like, they'll put other people's names in there, I guess they'll alert yeah, like, them or whatever. Yeah, and you, so, you, mm-hmm. I don't know how to do any of that. I don't know how to, I don't know, who want, no one would want to hear what I have to say. I've got nothing going Obviously, on. as a host of four podcasts, people no, want to know what you listen, have to say. I'm, I just, I wandered in the studio. I have nothing, I got nothing going on. So I want, this week, I'm, I'm glad we this came up. I need you, because you don't post a ton of stuff on Twitter. No, You'll do a I lot make of reply. Count. But what I want you to do is to be super clever, and so I can see how it works. Okay, I'll, I'll work, I'll work hard at that. Uh, no, Curtis, we did not. We did not play. Actually, I've played Cash Man in cooperative mode. Wow. Me and Brent played it. Okay. Well, so you can speak you to that. And Rampage, I'd say this is our first go around. However, Brent, or Brent, Aaron is bringing um, the uh, the Coco 3 to Computer Club tomorrow. And we will be getting down with the clown on that. We could have some three player Rampage tomorrow. Oh, yeah, because one person on the keyboard, mm-hmm. right? Indeed. I don't want to be that guy hunched over the keyboard, though. That's no good. Why not? Well, flick right now. What are you th- you're doing now? I'm not hunched. Hun- not I'm yet, lean. But you're going to be hunching here in a minute. I don't hunch. Oh, man. New Jag flash card. Dude, Jackie, I'm all over that sucker, buddy. But I don't have I don't have the wad. And also, I don't have the wad. And also, the, you have to make this from order, and the guy lives in, like, Siberia or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you've got to have the wad, and you've got to have what, patience. You've got the N64. You have the super, you've got the Super Nintendo EverDrives, right? You have yeah, any? I do. I do have those. Yeah. I do and have the Super those Nintendo are, N64. You got the Vectrix, Genesis, the Genesis. Vectrix. So you've got quite a few multi carts. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Of Turbo Graphics, Bam. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Gantlet. <laughs> That's got four player support, dude. Holy smokes. Yeah. I'm going to try that one sometime. Let's get this one. I'm ready. I got okay. a lot to say about this. Okay. All right. Don't forget the thing. Well, oh, don't forget your voicemail. Thank you. I remembered it, y'all. Let me pull that oh, up. Oh, dude. Real quick. Warren, you're right, brother. I don't get to play that enough. I've got too much stuff and not enough time is my problem. And unfortunately, I'm in America, so I can't ever retire. <laughs> oh. Hey, Edvin, are you still are you still on, man? Thank you for uh, your uh, Amiga Ireland donation. Thank you. You've been so generous uh, already, and you're generous. You continue to be generous. He took some cash out of his beer money yeah. uh, stash. He Tennessee. said, did you read what he said? He said his, his neighbor just stumbled into his house I drunk. S- he probably him. just put, he probably just reached in his pocket, grabbed a couple couple in bucks. Let me tell you something, Ed, but that happens happened to me so many times. <laughs> where liquored up fools come rolling in it's like, hey, what's going on? And unfortunately, I've lifted their wallets. They're broke too. <laughs> Not only they're drunk, they're mooches. Okay. I need to find Coco voicemail. Oh man. Is this, is this what we're doing? Picard for the win. Okay. Ooh. And then we go here. Look at all this. Look at this, what you're up to here. Uh oh. I don't have, oh, it's because I'm not signed in. I'm signed into the... I got so many accounts. Everyone write down his stuff. They don't let you just have one anchor account. you got to have a different one for each show. Coco really? So this is, is something here. we're not going to put in the ad. No. Let's see here. Fools do be fools. I agree with that. And then here. Okay, now we're ready. You know what the Luke's doing tonight? No. First ever. He's going to escape room. Okay. And he's having his first ever sl- birthday sleepover. Oh. He's going to it. I caught him on my way here. I said, tell him I loved him. If I always him. got scared when I had to sleep over. Why doesn't that surprise house? me, Boat? Because you're the biggest uh, wiener boy of all time when you were a kid. That's true. That's true. Thank okay. God you grew up to be a, a strapping young death machine. Let's make sure that we have. Let's let's try playing this. Man, I wish you guys could see what's going on over hey here. Hey, guys. I was just listening to your uh, oh. podcast where you did the. Uh, 
time bennett's and you were talking about that's uh, systems called a sultry and voice adaptation <laughs> he is sort of i would sexy. recommend yeah uh you're not go ahead all, and get yourself you know, well, no, i mean a i'm, I'm switcheroo so we can and a uh scart converter that makes okay, the on, best picture on, uh if not yeah you got that right pigs okay Okay, here's how we're going to play this. I like to See you, Jason. Here. Have a good night, man. Be good, dude. Take off, you hoser. Okay. Yeah. So, here's what we're going to do. All right. We're going to do the games. Yeah. And you wanted to do Rampage first, yeah. right? Oh, okay, yeah. I think I got that queued up first. No, I got oh. Cash Man. That's all right. Wait, we'll we do that. It. No, it's right. fine. It's fine. Okay. Then uh, we're going to save the voicemail for last. However, there is a danger in that, and that's we forget to play the voicemail. No, you forget. I'm just, uh, I'm literally Well, you're, you're part of this now because I'm including you so on the plan. So you're telling me you want me to remember to do something. No. Me, the worst memory. What I, if I get to the point where I'm saying the Patreons, uh -huh. just give me the... Like are you, that. Are you people in chat listening to this? Because we're going to be heavily... You're now members of the show. Please help us remember to do that. Thank, Thank you, Bart you. Bit. Okay, here we go. Does it? I feel you know, like Bark Bits my is my uh, band leader. I'm like Letterman. You know, this is like my normal pose when I'm sitting like on the show. You don't look comfortable. I don't. I don't look comfortable or attractive. Pose? Yeah. Well, I mean, now I look great. Pose. I look like a freaking stud now. Is that okay? You notice my pose never changes. I know. Slouchy bum. You always look good, except for when we had the other camera angle. <laughs> then you were assuming the Wilcox position a little bit. <laughs> Listen. What what can you do? I gotta be man's gotta be comfortable, as Frank Drebin said. Man's I can't wait. I'm so glad the Chud is healed and he will be here tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. That's true, like Curtis. Go Billy Jim. <laughs> okay. There's no hair up there. No matter how much you rub, it ain't coming back. You never know. You're not a genie. Okay. But silence. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Coco Show. I'm John. I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we got two big games big, to big talk about. Big multiplayer game. Yeah. I funny how they, we got two multiplayer it games is, this it week. It is funny. We got Rampage. Yes. And we got Cash Man. Cash Man, which I am not. Yeah. Now, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, Rampage. Okay. Okay. So, you are a monster movie guy, right? Uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Depends on the monster, right? I uh, was say there are, there are several different types of monster movies. You got your Japanese oeuvre uh, of your Godzilla, your Mothra. Yeah. Your these are the only two I know. Gamera. 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 Right. Picture the children. Right. Um, and then you've got your Universal monsters. Yeah. Your classics. You got your what? Your Wolfman. Your mm -hmm. Mummy. Dracula. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you fall in these camps? Well, they both have their merits and flaws, but if I can walk the line. Listen, I've watched enough Japanese schlocky monster movies to, to, to kill a small pig. I've seen them all. Uh, I, I like, and I've, of course, I also am a big Mystery Science Theater 3000 fan, and they've covered quite a few of those. So I do like the, uh, the genre of crap Japanese garbage monster films. They're funny. The monsters do wacky stuff. <laughs> I, I think I have to say, not to be, uh, 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 not to be too, too traditional, but I do like some some Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Godzilla does a lot of wacky stuff. I, I, I think it was Godzilla versus Megalon, whatever. Where he actually he boxes. He'll dance occasionally. <laughs> you know, I like that. That's always funny. I also like Gamera, Protector of the Children, the big turtle with mm -hmm. the jet engines coming out of his Oh yeah, holes. I love that too. Gamera's awesome. He's, he, he spins, spins around, around like an idiot. <laughs> you know, I always thought that was funny. Uh, on the flip side, the Universal Monsters, I mean, listen, you've got Dracula, you know, uh, uh, Bella Lugosi. He's the man. Vincent Price. Vincent Price, no. No. He was none of those guys. Uh, you've got uh, you've got Frankenstein, Boris Karloff, the great Boris Karloff. We just watched... Um, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas, the animated, uh, the original, Boris Karloff does the voice of the Grinch and as the narrator. Hmm, didn't and, know that. Oh, yeah, and Boris Karloff's just awesome. Awesome voice, just a great. But when he was Frankenstein, he didn't really speak, He though, didn't right? have to. But, yeah. I mean, he is a tremendous, got a tremendous speaking voice. Kind of ironic that they and cast him in that he role. He actually has worked with Bela Lugosi. Boris Karloff was also the mummy, wasn't he? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I think wasn't that Lon Chaney? Oh no, Lon Chaney was Wolfman Junior. I don't remember. Well, I mean, I think I don't remember exactly. I want to take Lon Chaney by the hand. No, it's Charles Atlas by oh, the hand. Okay. Your way up. Don't try to quote Rocky Horror, pal. Mm. Then no. Which, by the way, that was an homage to some of that schlocky crap as well. Which, of course, I love that. So I like them both. Uh, the Mummy, eh, not so much. The Wolfman, eh. What about Creature from the Black Lagoon? It's funny, I saw that in 3D. Mm -hmm. Simulated 3D. Not and, real 3D. Well, I mean, they did something to it, uh, and uh, it was better then. I wasn't a big fan of that one either, to be honest with you. It's okay. I just feel like if there's a creature in the Black Lagoon, don't go in the Black Lagoon. You know, just avoid yeah, but it. Have you seen the movie? They're, no. stuck, they're out there doing stuff. They're not just, they're what not, are they doing? It's all like, let's go find the creature. What could it be so important? They're doing scientific research or hunting for gold or who cares? They're doing something. <laughs> Why are you in a lagoon anyway? Yeah. You know, you ever see Blue Lagoon? Islands. Oh man, did I see that? Yeah, well, that, that, that was a whole different type of creature. Yeah. You know what I'm saying <laughs> that movie played a Ooh, formative hot. role in my life. Yeah, no kidding. Brooke Shields, good sweet lordy. But uh, uh, yeah, you, that's a tangent right there. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I, I, hey, listen, when it comes to monster movies. I like your Japanese, I like your dish. I like the Hammer stuff, Hammer House of Horror. That's too, it's too bloody for Are me. You Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, awesome, you know. What's Peter Cushing? Peter Cushing? What do you mean? What's Peter Cushing? Is it an actor? Oh, I thought it was like something else. You've never heard of Peter Cushing? Mm -mm. It sounds like a stop on the on the underground. Listen, you know, doors open on the left. There's Peter a lot Cushing. of people in the UK that listen to the show, and I please direct all your complaints. To idiot boy here he doesn't know who Peter Cushing. You know who Christopher Lee is, don't you? Yeah, he's okay. Sour Man. Well, I mean, yeah, but he was he was Dracula way before that. Peter Nobody Cushing. remembers him for that. Uh, just move along. I can't talk to you anymore about that. What's your next topic, Boat? Okay, Cash Man. Cash Man, eh? Yeah. What about Cash Man? Just flipping right to it. Just <laughs> skipping right over Rampage. Well, I feel like we've covered Rampage. We haven't even started. Let's cover All right, Rampage. Let's cover Rampage first. So. <clears throat> When I heard that there was a rampage uh, for... <laughs> what the heck? When I heard there was a rampage... Tonight there's going to be uh, on, a rampage. On, on, on the Coco. I got excited, Boat. Extremely mm -hmm. excited. And uh, lo and behold... Holy cow, this is the wrong video. <laughs> I was wondering about that. That's okay. Just keep you know, going. No, I, want to, I want to stop for a minute because... You know, you brutalized Donkey King a while What? Back. I was not hard on and Donkey now, King. And now, Donkey King's having his revenge by showing up here in front of you on the monitor when it's supposed to be Rampage. Look at that game. I want, I think this is a good time to, for you to formally apologize, everyone, for the for the horrible mis, the misdeed and disservice you did to Donkey King. Okay, I apologize for all the Donkey King folks out there. You Because you got caught on the carpet this week. And you know of, who you are. Yeah, because of your hideous... Hideous attitude. So anyway, getting back to Rampage. Uh, when I heard this was available in the Coca, I was trepidatious. Let's just put it that way. I was like, man, what's this going to be like? So what you've got here is a port of Rampage. Uh, came out in 89. This is a Color Computer 3 only release. It's immediately apparent that this was a this Coco a, 3 a game. This is a 128K minimum Coco 3 release. Mm-hmm. Uh, this also has RGB monitor support. If you've got the RGB hookup on the bottom of the Coco, mm -hmm. it gives you the option. It, it asks you at the beginning, it says, I yep. must know. Now, this was authored by the legendary Coco uh, uh, programmer, Steve Bjork. Now, uh, I went over, you know, this guy is synonymous with quality Coco things. I'm, I'm put out a list here. Of his of his other efforts, I want to go over some of these, but just briefly. But he actually did some non Coco stuff that I didn't even know about that I found. So just get this. this I'm just going to read off some of his credits here. He did Popcorn, Mega Bug, Sands of Egypt, Clowns and Balloons. He did the Zaxxon port. He did Guana Buana, which I remember. Stellar Lifeline, Desert Rider, Pitfall Two, which was really good. One on one, mm -hmm. you know, with Doctor J. Oh yeah. Super Pitfall, Mine Rescue, Bash, Snake Pit, and Rampage. He also did uh, Arkanoid. All right. He also did some other stuff, but he actually did some stuff not on the Coco. He did, and I get this, Boaster. He did Crystal Quest on the Game Boy. He did the Super Nintendo version of the Rocketeer. Remember that? Wow. I've got, I, actually, I actually own that game. Huh. Right? Uh, Chess Master on the Game Gear. Captain Planet on the Genesis. He was involved in that. Iron Hammer on Genesis 3D. So this guy got around. Bassmasters Classic. Who could forget that on the Super Nintendo? The Mask. 
on the Super Nintendo, Bassmasters Classic Pro, which is cool, and get this, my favorite credit, the mileage computer PC device for recording road trip mileage. So I guess he did some sort of thing with the... Uh, Outside of the gaming yeah, world. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I love that. So this guy is well-traveled and well-thought of when it comes to uh, Coco and uh, programming abroad. Now, right away, uh, you are presented with the opportunity to play Rampage. Rampage, Rampage was up to three players. Mm -hmm. This is astounding to me. And until Curtis mentioned it in the... Uh, in the chat earlier, I didn't know you there were any games that well, you could play with three players, and there's actually one you can play with four players, which maybe we'll cover at some point in the future. So, just right out of the gate, we've both played a, a lot of Rampage. If you're not familiar with it, uh, it's an arcade game where you pick one of three big size monsters to go and terrorize various towns. Uh, the monsters are called uh, George, Lizzie, and Ralph. Uh, with uh, uh, the, the George, I believe is the is the King Kong guy. Lizzie is the giant lizard, and I believe Ralph is the giant wolf man. Now, as a, a monster movie aficionado, is yeah. there any meaning behind those particular names? Like, of course, Lizzie, lizard. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, but. good one. You figured that one out. Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there any meaning behind them? Not that I'm aware of, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I, I, obviously, they're you can tell what they're based on, but that's pretty much the long and short of it. So, uh, in the arcade version of this, you pick no, one. no, I don't know what they're based on. Like King Kong, the, uh, but like what Godzilla. does George have to do George with that? George is a, a giant wolf. That's all I can tell you. I don't know that. I don't know. George is not a giant wolf. Oh, George is know. King no, Kong. I don't know why they named them that. Okay, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, you pick one of these three uh, giant creatures who have been screwed over by this lab. I believe in the sequel you find out it's Scum Lab. Hmm. And you are, go around and you uh, start crushing buildings anywhere you can and yeah. eating people. Mm -hmm. uh, in the original Rampage, this is, which is what this port is of, you, you come up on a screen. Well, first there'll be a, a thing that tells you what city you're in. There's a little message. And then you'll go sort of like a, a ticker, a news ticker. Mm -hmm. I used to work. I'm so old that I used to work. When I used to work at the radio station. The news, AP news, would come across on one of these printers on, on the wire. Yeah, yeah, it would come across, and you'd read the printout. Mm -hmm. Like this just in. Yeah, you know, I did that. That's it's awesome. Like, that's, crazy, that's very cool. Uh, so anyway, uh, then you will pick your monster, and you go out and just try to trash the city. And and you and what you do is. Uh, you try to bl punch buildings and kick them and to make the uh, buildings fall down. You also try to eat people, try to blow up trains and tanks and cars, the whole nine yards. <clears throat> and it's a fun game. It was a three-player game in the arcade. So uh, here comes the Coco version of this. Again, I was not familiar with this. Uh, the Coco uh, version was on cartridge and, again, came out in 89. So, again, you're given the choice of the monitor type, and you get to choose which uh, character you want. You've got your, you, it supports left and right joystick plus the keyboard as a player. So you can have three players at once. Now, you've played a ton of, of this. What did you think about this when it popped up the first time you saw it? Give me your initial thoughts. Oh, I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked that it looked this good. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I couldn't believe that, um, of course, you know, I, I don't have a ton of experience with the Coco 3 as a platform. Right. And, um, you know, it also, I had to go back because it had been a while since I played Rampage on anything other than the arcade. Right. Because uh, when you got MAME, it sort of makes you not want to play a lot of conversions. It does. Um, and I had to go back and, and I thought, boy, this really looks good. Does it really look, you know, does this look, and it did. It looks very, very markedly similar to the arcade. And then I was like, well, I remember most of the time playing this on the Nintendo. Right. And I went back to the Nintendo, and boy, was I disappointed. Yeah. This is this was not a good port on the NES. Um, I played this game. I had a blast. Um, I enjoyed... There are several things that I enjoy about this port. One is the amount of color on the screen. Yeah. There's a, an astounding amount of color. Um, I like the fact that there's both military guys and civilians. And some of these ports, they remove the civilians, which is like half the fun of the game. Um, I like the fact that you can see the helicopters flying in the background. The background is animated. It's a cool thing. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about this one is the, in, uh, they removed the eating animation. 
you know, in, in the arcade and also in the NES version, when you reach in and grab a person or grab something from a building, you actually see him go in his mouth and he chews Jeez. it up. Yeah. Uh, on this, you just sort of see his hand go in front of his yeah, mouth. It's yeah, it's a shame that they took that out. That's really the only, that that's really my only flaw with this game, to be honest with you. I, uh, I gotta say, again, having not played this, and I will, my, I had a Coco 3 eventually when I was younger. Mm hmm uh, but I did not have this game. Of course, there was no multi-card of Doom. Right. And, and I didn't have it for that long. So I, I don't honestly don't remember uh, this port at all. And so uh, I was not expecting much. And I hadn't seen a ton of Coco 3 exclusive stuff. Mm -hmm. If there was ever a reason for you to go buy a Coco 3 back in the day, this right here is like your poster child for that I couldn't freaking believe mm -hmm. this. I was blown away with how it looks. Uh, it plays quite well, and uh, it also uh, sticks. It's pretty faithful to the arcade. I mean, as I mean, I'm like you. I went to check out. I thought, man, this is really good. I'm going to check these other ports, and I looked at um, I looked at a lot of different ports from, including the Spectrum and the Amstrad and the NES. And of course, this got ported to like the Amiga and stuff. Yeah. And I'll, it's funny. Did you notice how many of the ports of this were the the guys looked fat? Oh yeah. And it was dumpy. It, well, I think it was the, the way. Maybe it was the way they were trying to stretch pixels or something. Yeah. But a lot of them just look straight up horrible. Like yeah. the the Atari ST is an abomination. It's so bad. Some of the the, the, yeah. the Atari eight bit. They, they, it looks like a twenty six hundred game. I mean, there is a twenty six hundred port, which it, obviously which is, works. Oh, but yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, bad. But um, I was surprised. Now another. Thing thing that surprised me is that the DOS version of this game it looks quite good. Yeah. And that's funny I had played that one. The uh but the the winner and I, I think uh I went Let is, me guess before you say it. Okay. Is it going to be the master it's system? It's the master system. Yeah. yeah. The master system has what I would say is the is your king. That much said. And I'm not and you know I yes, I had a Coco I'm a Coco fan and I will occasionally probably overrate some of them. But, but this game is got to be in at least in the top 2 or 3 of the ports. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing that really hampers this one is it runs a little slower than I would like. It could it could go a little bit faster. But listen, it you got three players simultaneous. It's got all the elements that make the game the game. You know, I mean that's important. It actually has the elements that make the game the arcade game. Right. Like they got most of the stuff right now. The way you destroy buildings, it's not quite as authentic as it is in the Yeah, sometimes I'd have buildings come down, and I wouldn't know why, because I hadn't destroyed them enough. I don't know what was up with and that. And sometimes you can just obliterate a building, right. and it, it looks it will, like, it, it, like, no way, it defies all the laws of gravity. Mm -hmm. You know, but again, if you played some of these other versions, that's not that uncommon. Uh, this looks like, I mean, this looks like, and I didn't think you could make these games look. This tells you right here that the potential of the of the three was off the charts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really looking at something that could actually make a pretty darn good game. Yeah, I was really surprised by this one. Uh, what did you not like? Is there anything you didn't like that? I mean, it did seem it did seem a little bit slow, but the original, but Rampage in the arcade is not a really fast moving game. You know, you don't want it to move too fast. Uh, you've got to make several precise movements. One gripe I've had with Rampage in general is that sometimes the buildings aren't quite as sticky as you need them to be. Like if you're trying to climb a building, you really have to line up to it just right to get it yeah. to go up. But that's a gripe I have with arcade the, the arcade version too. Um, this game could have used some music. Yes, yeah. it's, it's you know I I know that there is sound in this game, but it it does not it's appear good. it does not appear on the emulator um, right. when you try and emulate it. It could have used a, a kind I've of heard a, that, a yeah yeah it could have used a little bebop and track. I would have appreciated. It is the Coco Three, you know? It's it's funny. I, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but because I do this all the time on the spectrum, but I played this entirely with the keyboard. And I liked it, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, could you I have can a third, see that? Could you have a third player going there and play with the keyboard? Absolutely, yeah. you could, without, without any problems at all. Uh, you could do it. Uh, but man, uh, this one I was I was tickled pink over this thing. It's super awesome uh, for uh, for something that fits on a, on a cart. I think it was like a uh, I think it was a thirty two k. Yeah, thirty two k. Yeah. Uh, that's you that you got something. So uh, we agree. This is a big thumbs up on this one. Now, I actually looked up, actually, I'm going to give Curtis credit on this one. He linked me up to a couple reviews, actually one review on this one, in Rainbow Magazine. We've talked about Rainbow a few times. It was like 
the number one Coca magazine, as far as I'm concerned. It was real awesome and thick. They don't give these things scores, but I read the review. The reviewer was fairly kind to it. But in the end of the day, he said his his, uh, his uh, uh, judgment was made by his kids. He put his kids on. And he said they got bored in five minutes. It's only it's sort of blah. Well, that that's review. you know, Rampage is not the greatest arcade game that's ever been created. Man, it's awful fun. <sighs> I, I will say, you know, Rampage World Tour is, which is the sequel to this, which is which is, is which came out like at least ten years yeah, after. But the I mean, original. I'm just saying, it, it is it takes this game and and goes crazy. It's real fun. This is this is really one of those games that, especially if you're playing it single player, I mean, it's the ultimate one trick pony. Um, but that's not this port's fault. This port is an accurate rendition of Rampage. Now, this game came out in 1989. Yeah. What else was going on in the world of home computers and game consoles in 1989? A heck of a lot more than Rampage. So I can understand why kids might not be over the moon, but in terms of how well does this accurately portray the arcade version, knocks it out of the park. I will say this, uh, me and my boy played the original Rampage, and we played them both. He loves this game. Yeah, I and when you're it, playing two-player, it's a lot of fun. I think, yeah, I agree. This is not a game you're going to play by yourself. Mm -hmm. You get at least one other person because, you, for one thing, you're punching each other. Like, Luke loved to hit me in the crotch, and also he loved eating me, which mm -hmm. is something you could do in this when your little naked guy mm -hmm. walks off. Uh, uh, and it's my kid loved it. And, again, the sequel is also an outstanding game. This did get ported to, like, everything under the sun. It was popular. And this kept everything from the arcade version that, that made it fun. So, yeah, I, I think we both get this as a big enthusiastic yeah. thumbs Now, up. let me ask you just a general Coco question. Do you think that people by this time, of course, the Coco had been out for almost 10 years, and then we're on the Coco 3 now, were people at this point just conditioned to accept the fact that Coco games were not going to have background music? You know, it's... I think it's... The background music or that sort of stuff in general, we I just didn't think about. Yeah, because that's a the, lot yeah. of things didn't have any of any music like that. Well, you know, that's one of the things as we as we play all these different classic computers and things. I realize just how unique the Nintendo console was because every single game had some sort of background music and I was just so conditioned to expect that it's so remarkable to me that so many of these games from the same time period on other platforms just had no music. Well, let me say this too. Neither one of us came from a C64 background, mm -hmm. and they had some awesome tunes. Very true. And Very so true. I'm sure if a C64 person uh, would were asked that question, would be like, "Oh man, this and this and that." Yeah. They all had great music, and we're and so we, you know, the Coco is not known. The Coco, as we came across, can play some good tunes. Yeah. Well, but, Curtis just brought up a good point too. The Coco has no sound chip. Yeah. So yeah, that that the, that really the Coco, hurts. It. The Coco can play a decent tune. Mm -hmm. It's no C sixty four. That's for darn sure. Right. But I mean, it can play a good tune. But I think a part of it's just the limitations of, the, of this cartridge size, mm -hmm. and part of it's probably the limitations of uh, of the overall power. I'm sure this game taxed the Coco t to its uh, ends. Yeah. Did we get any? Uh, did we get any uh, listener reviews on this one? Uh, we on? did. We did. I will pull them up here. Um, we got. A review from the one and only Graham W. Webke, and he says, I'm not a huge Rampage fan, but I know this game is well loved and I do find it a fun game to play. Many previous home computer ports have been poor, especially the major letdown of those two different C64 <coughs> versions that were available. This is by far the best 8-bit home computer port of the game I've found. Mm. It plays like the arcade version, looks great for a home port too. And the sound is decent as well. It's a little slower, and while you might find that frustrating, it can also be an advantage depending on your opinion. Out of all the ports, I only prefer the amazing Master System port over this one. There so it is. I highly recommend you play this one if you own a Coco 3. Eight out of ten. Yeah. Thank you, Graham. Yeah, I, you know, he mentioned that this was the best 8 bit computer version. And of course, the Master System not being a computer, he may be honest. I mean, uh, this was a huge surprise to me. It's another one. Uh, I get it. I like it. Uh, I like seeing these games I never saw before because I, I I know that I'm not looking at them with with uh, nostalgia. Yeah. You know, and there and I, I really I really enjoyed this. I did look this up on eBay, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, you've got uh, uh, the cartridge up for, and these are all on sale currently: twenty seven bucks, sixty bucks, eighty bucks, and forty five bucks. Not a cheap game. And I will say this game looks like one of the ones it did have like it didn't have that standard Coco game. It actually had a like sleeve and stuff on it, so it's a little more fancy mm, than to get this. It didn't one. just have the window. Right, right. Let's talk about Cash Man, Aaron. Now this Wee, one. Ba, 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 da, 
this is another sweet, sweet surprise, but because uh, you, you ever play a game and then forget it exists? Well, I did. So when when Cash Man came up, I was like, I remember that, and I was thinking, I was thinking Bag It Man. That's what I was thinking, mm. which is the Bagman clone. And then this beautiful thing came into view, and I'd totally forgotten about this game, and I'm kicking myself because this is like a game that's. It's like they said, let's make a game for Amigo Aaron, and bam, it so shall it be. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the Cash Man. Now, I did a little background on this thing just to see the guys that did it. So Cash Man was authored by uh, Bill Dunleavy and Doug Frayer. Now, we uh, mentioned Bill a couple weeks ago. He was responsible for Time Bandit. Remember Time Bandit? Oh, yeah. So I, I was like, I was looking to see if these guys did anything else that I would know about. Well, guess what? Uh, uh, and I and I've got uh, uh, our, the Huck to thank for having researched the Dick Smith System 80. These guys, both uh, Doug and Bill, worked on Systems 80 slash TRS 80 games on that platform. Now you'll recall that uh, Time Bandit came from the TRS 80 Model One, Two, and Three that arena mm-hmm. before it came to the Coco. And uh, these guys did some games on there. In fact, they did some together. They worked on a game called Assault. They worked on a game together called Cyborg. Uh, Doug worked on a game called Fury. And they both worked on a game called Jovian. So if you're looking to get into some uh, Bill Dunleavy and Doug Frayer gameage, uh, I recommend you go and get that Dick Smith or that TRS-80 emulator and go pick this game, these games out. You can find them. If you Google them, they'll come up. They're on that, one of those compilation discs and, or a couple of them, and you can grab them. Uh, this was published by Computer Shack, which eventually became uh, Mitchtron, uh, and they were responsible for a couple games we've covered, including Outhouse, that me and Brent covered on uh, our uh, uh, ARG Fantastic presents. game. A fantastic game. And also Time Bandit. And one of these days, we'll probably get to cover Outhouse on this show, because oh, there's man. a Coco version. I can't wait. Uh, so I looked this up uh, to see. I had to find out exactly what this cost and what it was on. This was released in July of 83. Uh, you could buy brand new. You could get the cassette for twenty eight bucks, but if you wanted the disc, you had to pay you thirty bucks, the big money. Uh, this is this will run any of the Cocos with thirty two k of memory, and uh, you uh, are good to go. So, I'm guessing you never played this one either, no. right? So, what is the Cash Man? Well, let me tell you. Have you heard of a little game called Jump Man? <laughs> I have, have heard, you heard of, of a Jump, Jump Man. Man. Yes. Uh, uh, Jumpman uh, was a game that, you know, I'm a big fan. I think you are, too. Yeah, I uh, love Jumpman. Uh, and it's uh, one of the 8-bit, like, staples. Mm-hmm. It was on all. It was on Atari, Apple, you know, Connor 64. It was everywhere. ColecoVision had uh, Jumpman Jr. Uh, so Doug and Bill said, let's, we'll, let's see what we can do here. Now, this game came out in 83. I don't know exactly what, what year Jumpman. I think Jumpman may have came out the same year. So it's close, Okay. As to which one of these, I, and I didn't, to be honest, I didn't research that as to which one was was out first. But they, they're both similar, and I would wager since they were released so closely together that they probably were developed independently of each other without any sort of real. And really, they're not they're not entirely the same by any stretch of imagination. So, Cash Man's a simple game. You're a man, and what do you need, Boat? Cash. Cash money. Yeah. That's right. And so you've got to navigate uh, a, over forty five levels of cash grab action mm-hmm. now uh the game is a platform single screen platform game where you play as a cash man and you're running around getting money symbols and the platforms are a variety of things which we'll get into and you are continuously hounded uh by a a, a dude at the top of the screen dropping uh little things that eventually will develop into eggs that can be birds or they can be cats also you know and the cats uh, will hurt you if they hit you, uh, and you have a you have a what I would say is a, an ample hit point bar. That so you can take quite a few hits before you. Is that hit. okay? I didn't realize if that was a hit point bar or if that was like your men in the bottom of the screen. Well, it's it doesn't I'm matter. Pretty, yeah, I mean it's just one is the same as the other. Yeah. It's a long bar that when you die you lose a dot on. Right. Eventually you lose all your dots. Right. Um, you play as either the sheik or the sailor. This game has. Uh, two-player simultaneous co-op play mm-hmm. or i guess it's co-op or i guess you're out for yourself well yeah it's competitive <clears throat> you can there there the two different characters are the sheik 
which I is the blue guy, blue hatted guy with orange shoes, or the sailor, which is the white hatted guy with blue shoes. Mm-hmm. All right, and you get to play as one of the two of them. Uh, <clears throat> which is awesome. It depends on which joystick port you're no, using. No functional differences in the players. They None that I'm yeah. aware of. Um, so, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you have to go through these platforms and grab all the cash. Sounds simple. Uh, at the beginning of the game, it presents you with a way to choose how you want to play the game. Uh, and it gives you basically which what levels you want to start on. You've got your easy levels. Then you've got your, what are called the super jump levels. Then you've got your sort of expert levels. Then you've got no jump levels. And then you've got the what they call the puzzle levels. So you've got like, and, and they're divided into like X amount of levels each. So if you start at the very beginning and you get through all the easy levels, you're going to move right into the super jump levels. Uh, and, and if you just pick super jump, you'll just start where the super jump levels would start. Right. It's a good way to play uh, because it allows you effectively to skip past certain levels just to see what else is out there even if you're not good enough to get past them. I love the way that this game did level selection. Yeah, this is this is the way you do it. Manic Miner, take note. Well, now listen, this is a different sort of game. Yeah, it's a Miner. fun sort of well, game. Well, we're, listen, you're killing Manic Miner. So, um, what do you do in this game aside from get cash? Well, you avoid cats. And now, you <laughs> of know... Of course, I, I mean... We... Can you explain to me what... What the heck's going on at the top of the screen with this thing? Okay. Because I didn't see a backstory for this. I'm the, sure someone knows what, but I don't know what I it is. I created a backstory in my mind. Let's hear what it is. Okay. Because there's a thing that rides across the top of the screen like a little gondola, and it just drops stuff. Right. Okay, so you are the cash man. Yeah. Okay. That's as far as I got. That's it? No, I always pictured the the gondola that you speak of as being sort of like a reverse crane in a crane machine. Right, yeah. And, and so the, the crane is dropping things on you. Yeah. And these are points, and you can get extra points by collecting these things, okay? Yeah. Then you've got your bird, and your yep. bird's flying around, and your bird comes from eggs. Yeah. So if you catch one of the eggs before it hatches, it becomes a projectile, yeah. sort of Mr. Do-like yeah, projectile. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can have a lot of fun throwing that thing around and hitting monkeys with it yeah. okay now the bird is not your enemy the bird is your friend you can leap to the bird and the bird will carry you much like the winged eagle in lord of the rings talking about christopher lee earlier yeah and uh it will carry you to a different part of the level however the bird is also your enemy because sometimes the, you will leap upon the bird without meaning to and be carried to a part of the level you do not wish or to sometimes go sometimes it just swoop down where you're at and you're yeah. gone yeah and it's usually right when you're getting ready to get the money right but the bird does not kill you no you know and so there in this game there is no fall damage you can jump the controls are in this sort of classic jump man loosey-goosey style the half, yeah yeah half, but you yeah. gotta have them like that oh yeah yeah absolutely um did you say monkeys i thought those were cats These i call those monkeys they look like the monkeys from kangaroo okay they do sort of, but they've, they've got four legs. And like Monkeys legs have four and, legs. And a tail. And a tail, like a monkey. But that doesn't look like a monkey to me. I think it's a cat. Okay. I'm going with cat. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, this game offers, like you said, a... Um, you can you can choose from any any of the sort of starting levels within the greater scheme of things. You can't choose level by level, but you can kind of get a general idea. I love the way that the difficulty ramped up because yep. the first couple levels, I was zooming through, I was feeling great about myself, and I played all the way up until the middle of the second Super level. Jump, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump ahead to the expert level. So I jumped ahead to the most difficult level. They weren't kidding. Those are for experts. But you only. could actually beat some. Like I went to all the different, I went to every different plateau of levels, and I could always beat a couple at least the early ones. You know? I just I, I couldn't fig I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't do I it. I will say this game is like several different games because the no jump levels those are you really have to ch- think about it. It's jump man with no jumping. Mm-hmm. And so well, and, it's and, all about strategically falling right, to where you need right, to be. Which I, thought was, which I thought was great. It was a way to set themselves <laughs> apart. Curtis did point out the Jumpman did come first. Um, and uh, the uh, the fact that the first level you don't jump, it's like, hey, we're not just a Jumpman clone. We're doing something different here. I will tell you that it was funny. I, I'd forgotten the fact that you could jump in later levels, and I was cursing the fact, and I was trying to do up for jump. The Amiga has conditioned me for up for jump for some. Yeah, I forgot it was button for one. jump. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's rewind for a minute here. Okay. Because I should mention, I didn't mention this earlier. This actually got released on something called the Sanyo 
MBC 550. Okay. Have you ever heard of that? No. I want to mention that. And also, this works on the Dragon 32. And this also has a different screen mode that you can hit. And it actually makes this into sort of a, a different... It's a, I think it's for monitor compatibility, but it changes the color palette. Basically. Okay. Did you turn I, I didn't see that, and it just you basically... You never want to play with that. No, palette, it was hideous. But, but it still, it, it was there for a, for a reason. Okay. Um, this game has a lot of different things that, it, that are aside that Jumpman doesn't have, straight up. You've got conveyor belts. You've got uh, things that shoot you up in the air. Um, they're all like forced trampolines. There's also these things called zappers. Zappers are basically like when you go into them, they just get they hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like uh, sort of like a spike pit that you can but you go through it basically. It's got all kinds of different ladders, uh, ropes, and chains that you climb yeah. on. Of course, you've got all the different uh, platforms and whatnot. It's got, by the way, the uh, if you look at the opening title screen that has all this stuff listed, what's that say right there for that monkey? What's that say? It says, well, it's what's spelled it with a K. It says cat. It's a, it's a certain kind of monkey it's that's called the cat it's monkey. It's a cat, y'all. Everything in this is spelled cool guy style. That cat is true. with a K, bird with a Y. They should have put the cash band with the S as a dollar sign yeah, to complete there it. there you go. Um, so the various trampolines and, and, and the laser grids, it makes this game awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like Jumpman that's on like Mega Roid. I yeah. mean, it makes it... this. This is very good. Now, mm -hmm. I had forgotten about this game, and I'm kicking myself, like I mentioned. But I, when I played this, I was having such a good time, I thought to myself, I, I want to hear what Boat says about this game, because I don't know. I was very nostalgic when I played this. I, almost, I was almost weeping, because it had been so long, I'd forgotten about it. It was mm -hmm. like finding a lost treasure. And I thought, I want to see if Boat likes this as much as I do, because you know I love this stuff. And I, I'm, it sounds like you liked it as much as I, I did. did. You know, you have to put yourself in the mindset of the, you're playing this kind of game. This game, the controls of this game are are different than a modern, you know, platform game. The way that you jump, you don't sort of jump as much as you just kind of take flight, <laughs> you yeah. know, across the screen. Yeah. But the fact that there's no fall damage, you know, that you can you can try jumps and if you fail, you just get back up and go again. The thing that I the thing that I don't like about games like Manic Miner or not, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Miner 2049 and Bounty Bob is that they have that same kind of loosey goosey jump, but you get punished for it. And in this game, you don't get punished. You get rewarded. The bird picks you up and carries you around. You're flying around. You're feeling good. I don't think... I Actually, I think Mario Fortnite has got pretty tight controls, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't agree with you on that. But the Lucy Gooseness, of this, that, that's what makes the game. I will say that you are not as free-falling as... this. The, it's not as loose as Jumpman. Jumpman, you can sort of do... This guy, sometimes it's difficult to get him to fall the way you want. Yeah. Uh, you have to... You can't just leap off the ladders like a maniac. You sort of have to go to the... Kind of like to the top. And But they... They've got everything set up. You gotta think this is a 45 plus level. Mm -hmm. Okay, they say there are 45. That they say there's hidden levels. Mm -hmm. I, there you go. And I looked on Curtis's site, and it, it was the same thing. Like we don't know exactly what all's here. So chances are there are secrets in this game that were never revealed to everybody. Right. Uh, but the uh, they are so radically different, and they are so creative. And these levels aren't like uh, levels that just a, a jerk put down. I mean, mm -hmm. someone was a. You had a, a no, I wouldn't say it's a manic minor level of evil, but there was some pretty good evil. There's tricky going on. stuff in there, yeah. Yeah, there's it's, it's just I wouldn't say that it's not tricky. I just say it's more forgiving. Yeah, I mean this is a this is a big win here. It's also got that ca uh, the time you can see the time bandit guys touch on mm. this because it's the graphics and also the title screen is very much like time bandit. Uh, basically, anything this guy touched with Coco was solid gold money, and this is another winner. Now, how, how did you uh, uh, how did you like this as, as compared to Time Bandit? Do you have a, I mean, is this boy? You know, they're so different. This is got to so be different. for me. This is amongst the best things we've played so far on the Coco. I liked things about Time Bandit more. Uh, this game is a bit more abstract than Time Bandit is. Uh, That's I, what makes it good. Yeah, it's almost a little bit of like there's a little bit of like Bruce Lee in here. Yeah, with the climbing. There's yeah, a little bit of Jumpman in here. Yeah, the missile weapon is. I mean, it's hard to use, but, but it it's, comes it's, in handy. The, in the fact that it's there at all is so cool. I don't know. I can't pick a favorite between this and Time Bandit. They're just too different. I liked them both. I wish Time Bandit had the multiplayer that this goes. Now this is a game. It's like I said, I'd forgotten all about this. 
until I loaded it up. But me and the, and the Brent and me and my buddies from back in the day would sit around and play this game and would get well into it. You know, I love the fact that it's got a multiplayer element uh, and it's a, it's just a unique game. This is I, I look at this sort of like I looked at Yeti. It's just a wack. I love games that are wacky climbing games, and they just seem to violate all the rules. Mm-hmm. Let's just put part of a ladder here. Right. Let's make invisible stuff here. Mm-hmm. You know, it just let's just have. I, I will. The, if this game has a flaw that I don't like, it's that the enemy, which are the cats, mostly the cats, they are they literally they don't climb, they don't jump, they just literally kind of go around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, mm-hmm. They're they're difficult to tell where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. It would be more of a detriment if you didn't have the the bar that had so much lives or health. Mm-hmm. But that's one thing I don't like that the, is the way the enemies travel. But you can get past. That's not the worst, right? You know. So I love I love this one. I, I'd say it's a big. I'm a big fan. Um, I did find some reviews on this one. The over at the Coco Review Place I go to the Ice People reviews. They gave this one an A minus. They loved it. Uh, Rainbow again. They didn't give a uh, a uh, uh, score, but the guy to summary his summary was: Cash Man is one fun game. Buy it. That's a pretty good endorsement. Yeah. Hot Cocoa, which is another uh, Coca magazine, re- reviewed this, and their basic the basic gist of it was: It's too easy, and no, it's not as much fun unless you have two people playing. Mm. So I don't agree with that. Do we get any? Uh, do we get any listener reviews on this? No one? listener reviews on this one. So uh, we'll have to, uh, and of course, if you want to leave a listener review uh, and you are a Patreon supporter of The Coco Show, you can on the Coco Show Reviews uh, channel of our server. And uh, if you played some games, uh, if, if there's a game that we played before and you want to leave a review after the fact, we're open to that too. So feel free to do that. You know, this is, this is the kind of game, you know, we're both big 8-bit fans. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of 8-bit glorious love that I love, and I think I, you're the same oh, yeah, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? this, this, this is a total nostalgia trip, because I played games like this on the Atari 8-bit all the time. This we is, have, yeah. We've had a spontaneous review from Curtis. It's awesome. <laughs> so there you go. Now you, what is this? You told me to remind you about this voicemail. Yeah. So we we got a voicemail. It's actually been a couple of weeks since we've recorded. So I want to play this. This comes to us from Terry Allen Steen. All right. Let's hear this thing. Hey guys, I was just listening to your uh, podcast where you did the uh, time bandits, and you were talking about uh, systems and adaptation. And I would recommend uh, go ahead and get yourself a switcheroo and a uh, SCART converter that makes the best picture. Uh, if not, there's also uh, Coco VGA, which is out there. If you jump onto Discord and look for Coco Talk, you'll find all these subjects in there. And uh, appreciate what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Thanks. Thanks very much, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, that Coco VGA. You've got a Coco Three. You could jump all over that. I'm happy with uh, what I've got. I'll yeah. be honest with you. You know, neither one of us are real graphics snobs. We've never bought special equipment for RGB. If it's got composite, it's good enough for me. I buy special equipment to make the video look worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but thank you, Terry. We appreciate it. And if you if anybody out there would like to leave us a voicemail, you can do that from Anchor.fm slash The Coco Show. We need more. We need more voicemail. Yeah, we never get any voice. You know, Flack had that uh, mail that voice line forever, mm-hmm. and I don't think he got more than like one. Ma- I sent him one. He didn't play it, so I shouldn't have cussed so much, I guess. But uh, 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 I would love to get. I love hearing people to call in. That's great. I love oh, that's that. awesome. And Curtis informs us in the chat that Terry is a Coco Games developer from back in the day. There you go. Yeah, and I believe the Switcheroo and Curtis, you can back me up on this. Is that one of the items that comes out of uh, Australia? I think there's a fellow down there that does a bunch of uh, a, a, a bunch of crazy uh, stuff down there. While I'm thinking about it, I also want to uh, mention this again because I get I get a lot of information. If you if you want to check out uh, Curtis's tremendous Coco game site, you can get linked in there if you go to www.lcurtisboyle. That's L C U R T I S B O Y L E dot com. It's the place to be. He's the number one gaming guy on all the web, and he's one of our good buddies. Awesome, awesome. Um, and Curtis says the switcheroo's from Coco Man in the USA. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, 
I do want to let everybody know that we tape the show live every Friday on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. You can join in the fun in the chat like uh, L. Curtis B. himself. Ed Van Helland is here. Pixels at Dawn Gaming doing a great job with the with the mod. Uh, Ricky DeRocher is here. Thank you guys so much for being with us, Picard 2010. The ever-present. That's right, yeah. the ever-present. Um, and of course, um, if you are hearing the show for the first time on our Amigos uh, RSS podcast feed, uh, welcome. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. And uh, we always welcome feedback at feedback at thecocoshow.com. Is that really true? Did we really get the CocoShow.com? We got it all. Yeah. We got it all. It's an amazing feedback. URL. Make it great feedback. It's not. You it's the CocoShow.net. Feedback at the CocoShow.net, I'm pretty Close sure. Close enough. Yeah. It's one of those. Yeah. Did I write that anywhere? I don't know. I don't have that on my notes. Are you telling me this is live? <laughs> this is recorded live? Surely you let it this part. All right. So uh, I want to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, Jeff Landreth, Graham Vebke, Wing Chun Wolf, cool. and Curtis Boyle. Thank you so much for supporting The Coco Show. We really appreciate it. Fine, folks. And uh, if you'd like to support the show, patreon.com slash The Coco Show. Yeah. All right, Aaron, we will be back in a couple weeks with a new episode of The Coco Show. Until then, we'll see you all later. Adios. Bye. You know, we should, I, got a, I got a good closing thing for us. Okay. That's the end of the Coco Show this week. So until next week, Coco away. <laughs> okay. You can I'm, say just, that. I'm, I'm, I'm lying. That's okay. The end of this. Okay. Well. We got to come up with something. No, we don't. Yeah, why, we do, do. why does every show listen, need like a cute send We've got it. Listen, I got it. It's dangerous to go alone. Oh, what? Well, can't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get Eric Nelson down here with a ball bat. What's um? What's a what's a famous Huck. Coco character catchphrase? Um. What's a famous Coco character? We could, just, we could just throw batteries at the screen. Okay. That's, that's, when I think Coco, I think Radio Shack, and I think the Battery Club. The Battery Club. Yeah. See you later from the Battery that's Club. That's what you call our Patreons. The Battery the Club. The Battery Club. <laughs> and we could issue cards. That's not a bad, you know, we, we instead of the Coco Game Selection Thank Committee, you, we could call them the Battery of the Month Club. Thanks, guys. I don't Edvin, know. Go to bed, buddy. Yeah, Edvin, good night, sleep, man. It's sleep, too, too late for you sleep and Sleep it picks. off, brother. Yeah. See, Curtis knows. By the way, Curtis, I saw what you said about my ticker, my uh, uh, comment about getting the news off the printer. <laughs> you know, you if you'd been working in if you were working in radio back then, you'd have been the same way, pal. Hey, we uh, guys, if you are not doing anything tomorrow night, and you want to tune in our Taze Valley Classic Computer Club meeting is uh, yes, tomorrow sir. evening. It will run from around 7 till midnight. I was pushing that all the time. Every time you left, I was pushing that hard. I Thank you. Come. Thank you. It's going to be a big um, night. Of, I, I figured it. I think we're going to get some Amiga 1000, mm -hmm. some uh, Coco, and yep. some Atari 8-bit. Oh, yeah. It's on tap. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, Pixels, it never ends. He's a, he's a, he's a party machine. He is. He is. I see yeah, pictures of Edwin him. Edwin gets it. Pixel's Instagram account is just him uh, hobnobbing. Probably not Curtis. Literati, I'm gonna, I'm gonna and you're not listening to me at all. Stuff. You're talking to Curtis Sorry. right well, now. It's important. Yeah. What right. did you say? I was hobnobbing. talking about Pixel's Instagram account. Oh, I haven't been on He's that. out there with the Glitterati, him really? and the Kardashians. Yeah. It's so part I need to time, check that time. out? Yeah. If, so, so I need to leave Twitter, go to Infogram? Yeah. Or, is it's that what it's called? Infogram. <laughs> they, right after they bought Atari, they opened a social network. <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. See, I've, I've never been on Instagram. I always thought Instagram was for kids, but my wife tells me it's not. She follows Tom Brady on there. Oh, jeez. Poor Tom. He's having a crisis of identity. This he's having all kinds of problems. Oh yeah. He's the they're the worst. Like nine and two team. According everybody's like it's over for the pages. Like it is. Right. What about the other? Other than eight or nine teams, they murdered. Yeah. How about the Cowboys yeah. these days? You don't hear me saying nothing. Man, the NFC East is so bad. The skins are still the skins in are it. still in it. It's insane. <laughs> Curtis, I may tape that though when I do it. You know, Curtis, let me ask you a question. While we get you on here, something occurred to me the other day and I feel like a complete dumb guy all right so I ordered that 512k upgrade for the cocoa a while back right the mm -hmm. boomerang right I just stuck it in that's it well I was listening to pixel Gaiden and one of their guys ordered that 512 uh, meg upgrade and he's like yeah you have to go in there and cut a couple 
capacitors out and pull out a couple chips. I didn't do any of that stuff. I just stuck it. I didn't read any docs. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Push to myself, chip in and socket. Like, and then, and then uh, Eric was like, then I went to check to make sure it worked. I didn't read that either. <laughs> So, I never did anything, so I don't think I've actually activated the 512K upgrade. <laughs> well, you haven't me. missed it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. And until next week, if you're wondering if you should check out the color computer, I should Coco. Yeah. See there. See, Kurt, thank you, Curtis. So that would explain why I can't run some of the higher K stuff. It doesn't matter now, I guess, because I'm getting the other upgrade. So what's the what's the latest word on the uh, composite board? Composite board. Well. Of course, I put it in. Mm -hmm. I fired it up. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. So what's that mean? I don't know. So then I had to take it out. Okay. Now, okay, this is where you lost me. Yeah. Why did you have to take it out? Okay, why didn't it work? Well, here's uh, that. That's what I'm wondering. Like, there's those two jumper wires, right? Uh huh. Okay. So could it have been that? Uh -uh. Some, okay, so you're 100 percent positive because that the those were in the right go, place. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. And they were getting. I ohmed them out. Everything was working. So something was going on. So that meant I had to take that thing out. Well, taking that thing out was difficult. Oh yeah. I, I And so when I took it out, I knew a, a via hole was coming with it, and, it, and a couple via holes. So I'm gonna. What I've got to do is get my angel hair land material and patch those areas mm. which is gonna be a pain in the butt so i'm on it I, but i've got to, i can't find my angel here i'm looking for it so i'm gonna have to get some i don't know where it's at i got it at work somewhere so anyway long story short i've got a fix in the works it's gonna it's gonna be great it'll be great i promise you you will not be screwed i guarantee it all you right. can't lose that on any money Look yeah. That way. Oh no, no. I'm not concerned with that at all. I was just wondering what the latest was. Yeah, it was. I, let me put it this way: I devoted several days to this, and I, I wanted to murder myself with a hot air knife. It was so frustrating yeah. because it went in perfectly, right? And it was no problem. I, mean, I sent you a picture. I was like, "It's done." It wasn't done. Do you, you don't think it could have been the um, maybe that the breakout cable that I gave you was not the right kind of a cable? I mean, that, that breakout, breakout cable, cable didn't come with it? No. You're kidding me. No. It, the board came with nothing. It came with no documentation. It came with no breakout cable. I didn't even think that that was a breakout cable. So maybe it does work. Not now it doesn't. I thought that cable came with it. No. So you just grabbed a random cable and put it in there? Well, it's not a random cable, but it's it's one of those breakout cables. Thank God this has been recorded. <laughs> Listen, man, Wonder you're the one dumb that, guy powers activate. You're the one that told me that that you could do it, and so I just gave you everything that I thought you'd need. I mean, what else could go in that hole? What else could go in that hole? I can't talk. I'm too angry to speak. I I was so angry and frustrated at that. It was getting power. Maybe it works perfectly. Maybe it doesn't that, work maybe, perfectly maybe, now. Maybe that cable is just, that was the issue. It was the cable. It was all my fault. I will say this, uh, and I don't know the fellow that, I'm sure this guy's a great guy, okay? But the documentation not being there is, is insane. Mm -hmm. And his webpage, th that version stinks. Yeah. That stinks. Because it's, it's a total different board. It's, it's a total. It's, he's got 20 revisions. Mm -hmm. He doesn't fully go over everything. It stinks. That needs that needs a do over. That needs a do over. Yeah. And I think I hope that the thing I got in the mail yesterday <clears throat> is made by someone else because I'm hoping it's got better documentation than what yeah. I just did with yours. Now, to be fair, I don't think he sells a whole lot of these. I think he makes them on request, so well, maybe he just feels. Like, I request better documentation. Yeah. I mean, I the documentation stunk. Not giving you documentation with that is insane. And not giving a breakout board or you know a breakout cable because I didn't even realize it would need one because the board that he shows in those pictures is just your normal composite out. You know. Yeah. Is that is that the fellow's name? It's Ed. Yeah, Ed Curtis. Not, I mean, I know this guy's got a, a good rep. I'm not blaming him. I'm not blaming anybody. But not having the cable was bizarre. Yeah. And then not having any documentation is even more bizarre. Now. I'm assuming that Ed probably sells a handful of these, like you said, to people that are major hobbyists. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. you're a new guy. You've never done anything like this, and there's got to be a lot of new people coming to the Coco. I yeah. would. You've got to have better documentation. Yeah. 
in yeah. my opinion. If you're trying to get more people involved with the with the platform, that's yeah. for sure. So, anyway, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, it'll all work out. Yeah, I'm not. This isn't going lie up or anything. Which is, that, that's a that was a. a I, I, I I'm surprised there was no documentation because poor boat. I watched your video and you were trying to figure. I was it doing out. the best I could. I just didn't have. I had. I had nothing. I had. I did not have the the, the patience, the skill, or the equipment the to do any of that. Yeah. And, and even wiring up the the power for that board, he he mentioned because you had the B version. And if you read the docs, the, he goes to the docs. He goes. One thing to note about the B version is that the, that there's the, the diodes are reversed. Right. And I was what like, does what, that mean? what does that mean? What does that mean? So I had to go. <laughs> luckily, I found a guy who had done one. And uh -huh. I can see where he wired it up. Okay, because I couldn't find anything. And trust me, there's no videos on this. There's one guy that shows about a four second clip of mm -hmm. him putting one in. I was like, holy smokes, this is you weren't kidding. This is difficult to you know to figure out. So, eh. that's all right. Yeah, plucky. Oh, it's plucky, all right. I got I got plucked big time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We're closing it up. We'll Thanks see you tomorrow. For, yep, Join we'll see us. you tomorrow. Pays awesome. Valley Class Computer Club. Be there. Adios, muchachos.